Hello, everyone. No, actually, uh, what's poppin' Tub Nation? Welcome to Tub Takes. This is a uh, video podcast where we go over what's been making waves in the VGC scene. Today, I am joined by John Hu. What's up, everyone? Uh, we also have some accomplished guests. Me and John Hu were just sitting on our asses back home. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we've got a uh, regional runner-up from Fresno, uh, Gavin Michaels. Hey, how's it hanging? And we've also got top eight, Len Duel. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm excited to talk about uh, a couple of events from this past weekend. It's actually a... Uh... Oh, I have the wrong link open. <laughs> um, I'm showing them the doc. Oh, no, they'll see all of our secrets. Um, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. They didn't see anything. They didn't see anything. Everybody had their eyes closed. Um, anyway, we're... Uh, you know, this is a... I already kind of explained this is a video podcast. We talk about, you know metagame trends, current events. Um, we also talk about your questions, so feel free to leave anything in the chat if you guys want us to uh, respond to it or acknowledge it. And then um, we've also got... Uh, this will be uploaded on YouTube. Uh, sadly, I don't have Adi here to shill for that. So I think if I do exclamation YT, uh, that does Oh, work. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Set this up so we can shill for him when he's not here. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to be... Uh, this will be up on YouTube on Wednesday. So if uh, you can't make it for the whole stream, can't stick around for the whole thing, then, uh, yeah, you can catch the rest later. Um, and, yeah, if you're also just, like, you know, just discovering this and you're not a, uh, a Twitch person, you know, feel free to check it out on YouTube. Or watch it again and make sure to, you know, click on all the ads, um, subscribe here, subscribe there. You know, that's, uh, I, I've, I've got a Patreon. Um, yeah, if you just want to give me money. But that's it. Uh, just, uh, anyways, let's, uh, what is the first thing we got? We, let's talk about this special event. I, when was this even announced? This was announced, like, after Great last Tub Takes? It, the special event was announced between when I started work, and then when <laughs> I saw it, then the signups were already closed. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, this, this article was put up on Victory Road on June 9th. Uh, what was June 9th? A couple days ago. Um, Thursday? Yeah. Friday? Friday. Um, and uh, this is in Puerto Rico, uh, Caguas, Puerto Rico. Uh, I'm going to guess that's the pronunciation. And um, I'm guessing that nobody here is going. Um, no. How much uh, How much CP are... Uh, Gavin's like in the day two race. John, you have a world's invite, right? No. You, I have like... I'm like 40 away. 40 away. He okay. has confidence. Okay. I don't have any. I don't have any PC finishes because I've been casting too much. That's true. You're gonna be going to locals. I forgot we were talking about <laughs> locals and stuff. You might come crash at my place and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, Len, you do you have a world's invite? I do. Yeah, I think I'm up to like 490. Okay. Okay. So you're He's you're killing these regions. Actually, I think I'm at 490. I think we might be like tied or something. Um, <laughs> Ooh, tied on the leaderboard. Yeah. You we are in the funny spot of like having way more than a world's invite, and winning Nats does not get you day two. Yes, I was. That's what I was going to mention. Is that we are in the like ah whatever. Like we're not going to Puerto Rico. This I mean this this isn't going to do a sea of irrelevant CP. None of it can matter. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, but. There might be people that, you know, really need to get that extra bump for uh, Worlds and might be going to this. And uh, it's going to be especially important for uh, for Latin American players because I know that they've had uh, kind of sparse events. I, I'm not sure. Um, but, yeah, I thought that they added more slots to this as well. I thought that was the word, was that they were going to add, like, 50 more and that it already got filled up. There was also some other stuff that I saw uh, being mentioned. Um, like, that you could, like initially sign up for free um yeah and then you had to like pay them 25 bucks to keep this slot or something and everything i'm hearing just sounds like an unverified rumor yeah like, it, it has been like that yes uh the, the other like thing that this might be less rumor than factual but i heard people were getting like emailed like to just submit their registration payment to like a paypal link which was funny mm -hmm. um just different than everything that we've ever seen before it's almost like is this a real event? Are you actually hosting this? I mean, I mean, at worst, it becomes a, a quick little vacation to Puerto Rico, right? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Can't be that bad. Um, a little bit of history. Um, James Eeks. James Eeks won the, the last event in uh in San Jose, the San Jose special event. Okay, funny. Um, but yeah, that's there's not much more to say about uh the special event that. It signups are closed, so it's not really a PSA if you want to go get in there. Um, I couldn't have warned you beforehand because there wasn't a tub takes between the, this announcement and it filling up. So, um, 
so I'm going to go ahead and move us on along to talking about Japan Nets. Um, this is the, the fun one. You guys probably didn't get to watch much of it, uh, Gavin and Len. You guys were... Well, maybe. I don't know. Were you guys... Did you guys? I, they would have had to sacrifice a lot of sleep between day one and day two, I feel. When did it start? It started at, like, 5 the p.m. their time or something, right? Yeah, I watched it while in the passenger seat driving up to Fresno. Got nice. Some in. Okay. I watched some Saturday night. Hell I feel yeah. like I definitely saw finals. Um, and I heard some things happen in the car. And then I heard the word Stantler, and I was confused. Stantler did make a make a deep run, huh? Mm -hmm. um, here it is, it, uh, top eight. Um, so we saw that it was ultimately won by UB Slow, uh, Kaito Ari. Um, and uh, with a team of Mousehold, uh, Annihilate, Talonflame, Grimmsnarl, Ting Lu, and Iron Hands. I actually remember, me and John watched a lot of this in Call together. And uh, so I'll probably be like referencing that a lot. But I remember when we first saw this team appear on stream, I was like, which direction is this team going? I just don't get it. Is it a Tailwind team? Is it a Screens team? Is it a Mouse Ape team? Like, there's also a Hands here, double fighting. It's just, it's every direction at once. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think... Well, go ahead. You got it. You're the guest here. I think that, like, what's interesting is while this is going on, kind of tying back into uh, some of the NA stuff... We're also seeing like mouse ape talon like start to pick up in usage and start mm -hmm. to do super well. So like I kind of focus on like that portion of the team more than anything else. But the Grimmsnarl is really cool too. Like I think we've seen a couple of like Grimmsnarl hands teams, but most of the ones I've seen have had like a uh, gold dango on it or something, and it's kind of like double setup. And I guess like hands and eyelape is double setup too, if you really think about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They they've got the swords dancer bulk up option. Um both of them have uh, Drain Punch for Sustain. Um, I think Goggles Ape seems to be a bit more of a popular pick over there, at least from some of the apes that we are seeing. Yeah. In I Runs. did see a couple Goggles Apes. My guess, I suppose, is that I think for one, it's like kind of a known thing at this point to be Goggles on your mouse. Um, so they won't like obviously spore your mouse at all. But in the event that you're got you're caught out of position where mouse is off the field, and they have an opportunity to spore you, the goggles on ape will will help you out. Um, and I think they didn't have open. No, no, wait. They had open sheet only in the top eight. I want to say, and that and was they did open not have sheet close terra, <laughs> close terra. And in the actual competition uh, on Saturday, uh, they did not have it at all and they just had to kind of go best of one best of fun at least it was double elimination so it was like at least not super terrible like out of all the formats you could have been playing this on it's not the worst thing ever but uh still a little brutal for sure i think i was seeing a bunch of tweets about like certain one one matchups being like really brutal mm -hmm. um, i think you do have to look at a lot of the teams in the lens of initially being a closed team sheet tournament right like mm -hmm. The safety goggles makes a lot more sense on Annihilate instead of Mouse if you think the most important rounds are the ones that get you to the close team sheet part. Yeah, because like top eight is a day two Worlds invite. Mm -hmm. What what do you even get from like winning? Like, oh, uh, uh, like the you get a travel award. Which uh, I mean, it's in Japan, so I guess the travel award probably isn't worth all that much. Um, but I don't know. I, I'm not like a travel award person, so I think they give you a stipend, right, when you show up to the event. Yeah. Worth so it's noting. not necessarily that, like... I was going to say, yeah, uh, yeah. worth noting they is that this it. was a uh, winner's, like, bracket, loser's bracket type tournament. I think that was new for them. Um, mm -hmm. And so, like, when people finished in the top eight, there are actually people who finished in the top six, and, like, third and fourth are distinguished and different in this, even though they have the same rewards i don't think they got there the same way the same route um so yeah it, it, this is uh definitely a bit different i also uh went and found um a tweet that showed like the the open sheets they like this is very familiar this looks like reminiscent of years past like before yeah. we even had open team sheet weren't they doing stuff like this um where they would um pin it on the wall and like just have the teams for like top eight yeah, they've yeah. always they've always done this. It's um their format is really like clean and they kind of figured this out uh where they can pretty much present all the information that's relevant 
And of course, before terror types existed, they didn't have to display that information. Of course, this is closed terror, so they don't do that anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is a little different from the open team sheets we all know, besides the terror aspect, because these sheets also display the effective nature of that, every yep. Pokemon, too. Um, which which is something is that, that is like... The left? It is the middle bottom. Middle bottom is an ability... Yeah. Uh... Oh, sorry, ability, it's nature, item. Ability, nature, item. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Japanese players looking at these uh, when they go to their top eight um, games, they will have the ability to also be able to think about speed tiers specifically, or like damage calcs in their head, because they'll know, oh, this this Pokemon is modest, or this Pokemon isn't speed boosting, or this Pokemon's actually brave, or whatever. So, does this mean that none of the Japanese players will have any experience like with the world format of like open team sheet. We've, we've mentioned this mm -hmm. topic a couple of times on the show and also just in my personal talking with like a variety of VGC players. I'm in the camp that I'm like 70% sure that we're playing uh open team sheet, like the, the NA format that we've been playing all year long. But like, I don't know, man, what if, what if they just, we pull up to worlds and they're like, yeah, no, it's, it is closed team sheet. Like, you know, just, I, I, I'd be very confident it's it's open team sheet. I mean, TPCI, despite being in Japan, TPCI is running the tournament, so mm -hmm. it will be our mm -hmm. our format, our circuit. See, Len's one of those guys that just actually thinks like he knows, you know. All right, you know, I I I, I can't say with confidence. I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm with Len. It's TPCI. Um, yeah, yeah, but that no, no, that is a good point to bring up. Is that like you know, even in their their home worlds, they're not you know playing the same format throughout. I mean, to be fair. I think that they are like getting to experience all aspects of Pokemon. They they start with a best of one qualifier, a mixed best of one, best of three, open team sheet Nats into full open team sheet worlds. They are just playing every angle of Pokemon. Like next year, they're gonna make them play like Smog and OU to qualify. Well, that's funny because I think the majority of Japanese players who play Pokemon just played uh, singles ladder. It's pretty like, popular there, right? It's really popular. Um, but I mean, like, Doubles Ladder is still very popular as well. But I think the, the main thing is that I think not many Japanese players play on, like, Showdown. So even if they, like, did play a bunch of, like, in-game stuff, it doesn't really prepare them for, like, open sheets and worlds. But if they play on Showdown, or they have some way to play on Showdown, I mean, that that's at least something. I mean, you'd have to be able to read English, probably, because I don't think they have it in japanese unless they run like a translator to it or something mm -hmm. but that would be another way they could get some um open team sheet at least on from our side experience if they just go on showdown and play open team sheets probably mixed results there but um just a solution oh, yeah there, there was a couple of uh chats that i wanted to mention from a while ago but i didn't want to like disrupt the conversation here i am disrupting it now um, one person asked earlier, like, are you finally going to talk about the day two race? Uh, while we do have Gavin here, I think we're probably going to still save that for the NAIC preview because that's when everything's going to be like finalized, premiere challenges, and everything. So that's probably a later topic. Um, and then one person mentioned said, uh, Japan did Ray Rizzo so dirty. And that is so, it was so heartbreaking um, to go this far to make it all the way. Uh, for those that don't know, essentially, um, when you qualify for uh, Japan Nationals, it like, is tied to the game save cart that you're playing and ray uh deleted his save and started a new one so that he could i think it was to practice in ladder anonymously or something like that and it was to play in english his original save oh. was in japanese and i guess he was comfortable with that with an online tournament he can like check translations as needed but he mm. wanted english mm. for something in person didn't realize that resetting it to change the language would uh lose that it's kind of crazy you can't change the language without restarting the save to begin yeah. with because mm -hmm. this isn't something they mentioned anywhere it's just like showing up and it's like ah you didn't like you had no way of knowing this but like that i don't know that seems just so blatantly unfair to me yeah over, over here it's tied to our trainer account like our nintendo account so that kind of information like when we think about when we think about ICs or uh not ICs they're called what now they're called GCs. global challenges GCs yeah. okay when you talk about GCs like people play with like you know sub accounts because like the highest account gets taken into account there right and that's all they're all attached to your Nintendo account or whatever assuming you linked it correctly 
But I suppose in Japan, that's not the case. So it's just tied to your cart name. And uh, I guess Dre just had to, like, had made that assumption where it would be tied to his Nintendo account. It didn't work that way. He kind of got punished for it a little unfairly in that sense because it wasn't ever mentioned anywhere. But it is really sad to see, like, such a great player not have the chance to come back. Like, stop. Like, he's had a lot of stop at something this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, you have to remember at one, he, one point he already had the world's invite because he'd made the, the yep. top 64 in the online tournament. So it yeah. took the extra step of, of the world's invite becoming based on nationals and then not getting to play in, in nationals. Uh, it's really a shame because he was like playing and prepared for this. Um, mm-hmm. Love to have seen him in worlds again. I know. Uh, did, it, did him so dirty because like they had the whole thing of him being like the final boss for like the champions uh, tournament thing they did over COVID, right? And they included him that. And then it's just like, Doing that and just screwing him over so many times when it actually counts, it's just that's that just sucks. Mm-hmm. And we, like it was almost a double heartbreaker weekend. Jumping ahead, uh, talking about uh, Aaron Zhang, um, he almost like I, I, as far as I know, he actually had to just fight through it. Um, he got like a what a round one loss for submitting his team sheet late, and mm-hmm. uh, still managed to go uh, what seven and zero from that O one start. I think to guarantee it. Um, you know, yeah. Eight oh okay. Was did he need the eight or did he just need the seven? Nah, he needed seven too. Okay, I think. eight was just gravy. All right, hell yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, crazy. and that was with uh again we're jumping ahead, but that was with your team, Len, right? Yeah, it was. Uh, hell yeah. I asked. I walked in and asked him if he'd submitted the team online, if he decided to make any changes, and he asked if he had to submit it the night before. Oh uh, no. So sad. Man, 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 man. Oh, that's so sad. Um, okay, but we, we let's talk a bit more about, uh, we'll definitely keep talking about some of the stories that happened in uh, Japan, but also some of these teams. Um, the runner-ups team was the uh, kind of infamous from the weekend, uh, Gunk Shot Annihilate. Um, I was about to say it's Terra Poison, because I'm pretty sure it was, right, John? It is Terra Poison. Yes. Okay, yeah, I was like looking for it. I was <laughs> like, Terra Poison, Gunk Shot, but um, yeah, it's close Terra. <laughs> But yes. Yeah, very funny Pokemon. I definitely think it was made with the idea of yes, it just does a lot of damage. Gunk shot, crazy move. I think we have the perfect guest to explain why are we using gunk shot and not poison <laughs> jab in Gavin Michaels. True. But, yeah. The original that, that is a move that it learns for some reason. Good players hit their moves. Good players um, hit their moves. And also it's like with poison jab i don't know what the hell this is calcing for i'm gonna be totally honest with you but i'm assuming that poison jab one hit ko's uh like if you get a crit gunk shot oh ko's if you hit so it's like that 80 percent versus the one out of 24 you take the 80 i mean what's the bp difference it's 80 versus 120 like yeah yeah that is actually like i we've done this one before i've said this before on the show but like 80 versus 120 is very easy and it's a it's 1.5 that's an intimidate like Going for Gunk Shot at minus one is like going for Poison Jab. Going for Poison Jab is like going for Gunk Shot at minus one. It's just like you're permanently intimidating yourself. Like, come on, just get over it. Just hit. Um, just hit the move. You, you, or you like, I guess the, the flip side is like, it's like a choice band to uh, Poison Jab. Like, you know, just take that free choice band. We know this guy likes damage because he's got five adamant Pokemon. Hell yeah, you're <laughs> right, you're right. Let's go. Sure does. Okay, but that's actually very important to bring up because I saw huge value from clicking simply just reflect in the finals. Like, it was just like, oh, I don't even need dual screens. I just need the one because this is like bundle plus five attackers. The yeah. team could not break it. Like, it was it was this kind of crazy. This is something I wanted to mention too. Um, I don't know if this is just like a Ting Lu meta or something. The winning team was six physical attackers. Yeah. It That's is. true. That's <laughs> true. And uh, they set up reflect to beat five physical attackers in the finals. Like... <laughs> Where are the wait? So Flutter didn't even make finals. Flutter Flutter washed. Flutter was three and four. Yeah. A- Ape yeah. Ape the better ghost. I mean, every team is still running one of the broken Gen Nine ghosts. They did add some very strong ghost Pokemon. Goldengo mm-hmm. makes one appearance in the top six. I, I saying that makes me want to barf, but it did no. It's actual top six. Um, it's top six because of double elim. Because of double yeah. elim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got top six at Nats at twenty fifteen. What about it, man? <laughs> um, I still remember that I was sixth. Anyways, uh, Flutter uh, has, yeah, five appearances, but not all, got not going all the way. We actually have the broken Gen 7 Ghost in Finals 2, Mimikyu. Definitely not as broken as it was. 
But um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Mimikyu also is kind of a rare appearance. We don't see it a lot. It's got the wood hammer. That's fun. Curse, also cool. Uh, just like, honestly, just a fun Mimikyu. I mean, just like a, a good mod on a aggressive team. Yeah, I was uh, I was like pretty happy for the Mimikyu until I saw it wood hammer like Ting Lu on switch in and it did like no damage and I was like oh, you know maybe maybe it wasn't okay to give Ting Lu like one twenty five or whatever basic defense it has but you know it's just really sad to see a Pokemon that's typically regarded as a pretty strong I mean it's it's pretty strong with a life orb right Mimikyu's not like, strong Mimikyu's no not damage. strong yes it is what are you talking about no 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 the the thing with Mimikyu that I always like to like compare to like is that they took a broken typing put it with a broken ability but made sure that the stats weren't going to blow you away and then they said like well actually no let's let's blow people away and make flutter me mm, fair enough it, it's got low base power moves is another thing that holds mimic you back um Woodhammer, i guess being a sm- slight exception what was this tarot grass that'd be funny i don't know i didn't get to see it, didn't get to see it. Mm-hmm. um but yeah, so what are some of the other uh, standout things here in top eight? Um, Stantler. Of Stantler. course there's Stantler. Let's look at the Stantler team. Um, Stantler. Stantler has no attacks, I am seeing. Helping nope. Hand, Hypnosis, Reflect, Trick Room. Uh, honestly, Motto Reflect, after what we were just talking about, is so funny. <laughs> That's yep. awesome. A classic, a classic. I was literally um, just saying you only need Reflect. I mean, they have three, four special attackers, but they say, like, nobody else is going to do this. I'm the only one doing this. I, I got him top eight, to, so... I love that it gets to use EV Light, even though it has no evolutions in uh, in the format. Yeah, no, that is fun. That is I honestly fun. thought Stantler would be good when, like, the rules were first announced, because it was like, oh, it's the only Trick Room on. Mm-hmm. Um, which isn't like a lie but like also jesus christ <laughs> yeah the mon does not really have stats good move pool good abilities just like no as, stats as 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 john pointed out and was you know right to point out this was open nature which is like kind of massive i i don't know if they knew this going in or not but like when i see brave great tusk that changes so much about what i am doing to the pokemon into the pokemon like that that is crazy um and that yeah like just a bunch of other things um you know like you know the the sylveon is quiet so it's not going to outspeed your your iron hands and such um but but yeah um this looks like a a fun sun team that also features the the stupid deer i can't believe that just no attack stantler made it this deep um this is not at all related to uh is that person here the the Braviary Fortress person that was just like, I wonder if they, I wonder how well they did, if they even brought the same team. Um, what? Braviary Fortress person? Do you not know what I'm talking about? John, you know what I'm talking about, right? I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's um, like a, there's like a guy who like every GC, or maybe like whatever, whichever GC he, he topped or whatever, he had like Fortress Braviary. And like, I don't know, we were, we were like, you know, in the tub, we were just kind of like, yeah, this is kind of neat. It's kind of neat. And I think Braviary itself is still, like, kind of a thing in Japanese meta. I think if you scroll, like, not not here, I guess, but, like, I think it was on some teams. I remember seeing some stream games with Braviary in it. Um, it showed up on stream in Fresno. I was going to well. say, I remember seeing it in the Fresno oh, stream. Maybe, maybe it was the Fresno. I'm just mixing it. It's all it. blending like, together. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, Braviary, I guess, is, like, somewhat of a Pokemon they considered. Um, I, I don't think it's a news to anyone that the the metagames develops way differently in like japan or america you know we always talk about like what are the differences or what are we adapting from each other but um yeah like speaking of that even like even in top eight we see there's like two don dozo no like but only one of them is tatsu and the other one is like a plain dozo um but i think i remember seeing a couple plain dozos also yeah, as one of top 16 um even small but, things like both of the GUs in top four are a little bit differently different than how it's played here. We got a scarf one mm-hmm. and one with Will O Wisp. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think like in the West, what ended up coming up a lot is either a uh, Life Orb, Terra Blast, or like the nasty plot or choice specs. I don't think mm-hmm. I've seen Choice Scarf in a minute. But I think there's two Choice Scarf in top eight. Yeah, there's the Stantler one who's Choice Scarf, I think. And then there's like another one that's scarf up here somewhere. Oh yeah, we should probably mention that this was um, 
Like they had the spectator mode. They had a uh, spectator mode going. We saw a brief preview of that, I think, in Hong Kong at their national. Um, and it's some kind of strange live competition system where, like, it, I think, automatically cues you into your next opponent. Um, I'm not sure how they were doing the best of threes in the top eight stage. Uh, I can't tell you. <laughs> um, but it's kind of like how we used to do things in the back of the day, I imagine, where, like, you would get your team locked. Uh, you would have to go and, like, you know, get the tournament code onto your Switch from, like, a, a host Switch device thing. Um, I'm curious, though. I wonder if we'll actually get to experience this at Worlds, if this is... Because, I mean, they did play best of three from top eight on. So, surely the system can handle best of three. Uh, but the spectator mode does look very clean. Uh, we got to watch a bit of that. Um, uh, I showed a preview of that, like, a couple of weeks ago. And, yeah, it's just, like, you know, you have all the HP bars. It shows the mons that have Terra'd, as well as their, like, Terra type. Um, and it's really cool. Yeah, I was really enjoying the interface, really. I think the only weird thing I think I found a couple of times when I was watching is that sometimes the uh, idle animations for the Pokemon would play even though the turn was starting or, like, they were switching in or out or something. Oh, that's fine. So you'd be like, oh, the Pokemon is doing their little idle animation and then suddenly they're into the attack animation, like, mid-idle animation. And it was kind of funky. Um, but honestly, they kind of do that in the base game, so I wasn't too, too phased on it. I was just like, yep, this has that quirk, too. Uh, that is pretty funny. Uh, uh, Maluka pointed out that it was actually, uh, or uh, Maluka said, I thought they registered through online competitions like the GCs. So, yeah, and that might actually uh, ma that makes sense because it's tied to your game's um, ID or whatever, like your your, your game uh, your file, yeah. your save file. I guess is the best way I can think of it. Yeah, I think you have to register through that way, and then it has to like seed the tournament for the spectator mode to work. So, like we, my mm. understanding is you can't be used for Swiss. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe we won't be seeing this at Worlds unless, uh -huh. unless there's a major update. I mean, we already play tournaments by going through WAN and then connecting to w w online. So, like, maybe it's and then that doesn't work. So they tell you, yeah, just use local wireless. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Sometimes that's <laughs> true. Um, in the third place team, we saw Garg and Ackle. Me and John kept making fun of this one because it was like, "Why? What is the Garg doing, dude? Who invited this guy? It's a fuck. <laughs> it's a, it's an offense like Tailwind Sun team, and then Garg is just here, and it was coming out. It was actually no, wait, no. There was another. Wasn't there another Garg team? Um, you know, there was another Garg maybe. team that didn't make it as far. Uh, there was a Garg Torkel. I just remember Garg Torkel next to each other in the stream game. Not Gorkel. Gorkel. No, I don't remember, dude. <laughs> All I know is that I don't think I saw a single game where it was brought uh, in, like, the sets I saw this player playing in. I literally saw them just be like, Murkrow, Great Tusk, Chen Pao, Flutter. Or, like, Murkrow, Flutter, Chen Pao, Chi Yu. It was like, I, didn't never, I never saw them brought that Pokemon at all. So, What I knows? like about this team, I like the Icy Wind Murkrow. I think that's cute. Yeah, it's an important thing when you are chasing the speed ceiling to have extra tools to reach it. Um, and so that's why you often see bundle on these types of teams. But, you know, opting to fit in the uh, Icy Wind means that, especially because you're a, a dark type and a prankster in a Murkrow mirror, you could just turn one Icy Wind uh, and then go for that late Tailwind, have an extra turn of Tailwind on top of them and um, and the speed advantage too. Uh, that can be very strong. Uh, I kind of could skip talking about uh, fourth, sixth, and sixth um, because these are just like I mean, there's probably something. Let's look, I'll do a quick scan with my eyes to see if they did anything crazy, like Thunder Punch on the Dragonite, um, Icicle Crash Chen Pao. Uh, we believe in our uh, in our consistency. They wanted the extra damage, and honestly, I respect it. We were just saying you should just not miss your moves. I and mean, he's getting like five extra BP, okay? That's true. It is five BP. You got to draw the line somewhere. <laughs> um, what the heck is this flutter? This is, uh, we don't get to know it's Terra, but it's Dazzle Gleam, Terra Blast, Substitute Protect. Um, yeah, I mean, is Terra Blast more powerful in a format with closed Terra? Because it's not just what defensive type uh -huh. is it going to be. You don't even know what coverage move is coming your way. <laughs> like, you have to be worried all the time. This reminds me of, like, hidden power right. in years past. Yeah, it's... true. <laughs> Truly. Right, I'm, I'm going to make a bold claim. I think it's got to be Terra Water. 
Terra Water. Um, I, that, that, that feels a good, like a good pick. Yeah, that feels correct. Maybe it's like, it could be Terra Grass, honestly, but yeah, it's what? probably one of those two. Um, and we also see the I mean, stuff. Right? No, true. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does not learn a water move, huh? Uh, and lastly, down here, we've got, um, yeah, just a, a, a Don Bozo team. A, um, another Stealth Rock. Stealth Rock's actually making a couple of uh, appearances here in the uh, top eight. So that's pretty cool. Um, I think it was only on two of these teams. But um, the Stealth Rock Sting Lou, that's fun. Uh, One? Yeah, a couple more, couple more Ting Lu, Don Dozo stall breaker type teams mm -hmm. here too some opting to run the tatsu some not so um and then lastly this team is like the standout team looking at it like it's just like this person's running like a i don't know this just looks a thing that a european would run i don't know which european but it looks, <laughs> it looks european <laughs> i don't know how to hey, they, got, they have mirror herb gyarados i clicked the cheat life mirror orb, herb gyarados life orb uh earthquake tyranitar iron defense body press bronzong Mirror Herb, Terrible Blast, Gyarados. That's got to be terrifying. Um, Tailwind. Yeah, it's like it's it's Tail Room. Like this actually just looks awesome. Like it looks like it's playing a game that we're not allowed to play. Um, like this is like something that you would play in like 2015 or like I don't There's know. There's an Akaberry. There is an Akaberry. <laughs> I think you can give a little more respect to Akaberry in closed team sheet. I I think that the resist berries are cap in open team sheet, but. Um, not until you put a Yachi berry on your Terra Water Shroom. I like Lexar's uh, typo. Occasional berry, um, <laughs> occasionally berry, um, instead of Aka berry. Um, yeah, I, I forgot there were uh, some European was running like Aka berry Terra Electric Mushroom, and I was just like, I, I'm not here for it. I don't like it. Well, I think that's Julio. <laughs> I think that's Julio. Isn't that his thing? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I like Julio's teams this year, but what? I'll never understand the Terra Electric Mushroom. There are some whack choices there, but hey, um, he's all right. I think it was Joe at one point this weekend asked me why I was Terra Steel instead of Terra Electric on Amoongus, and I just looked at him like he shot someone I loved. <laughs> what What is the electric... There's a secret, like, cult of Terra Electric believers that I do not understand. The, they want a flying immunity, and they don't want... They, they want to be able to like be neutral to fire afterwards, mm. but it's a rain team. That's you can what go I'm rock. Saying. You can resist both. <laughs> Yo, Terra Rock. That's I remember, the real one. I remember That's getting so, hit yeah. by Terra Blast from Terra Rock Amoongus once, and it did like forty percent to whatever it was. It was like super effective too. Um, did forty percent to your Volcarona? Yeah, exactly. That's uh, my new calculus, right? Terra Electric, yeah, the, at least the light bulb does look kind of like a mushroom, so I'll give you that, Rafa. Um, looking at some of these other teams, we see an Iron Moth. I don't think we have sheets for any of these, so we can't really expand on them. Um, we saw Glaceon make it all the way to the top 24. How fun. Um, Screamtail, Goth. Wonder if it's uh, Parish or not. That's fun. Kind of looks like it. I think it's either Self KO Parish or like. Mm, true. There's a Parish game plan in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So, correct me if I'm wrong. As far as we know, there's only like two Amoongus and like two Arcanine in all of their top 24. Yeah, I'm down Ooh, in the top 32 yeah. now. That so. looks like it. Yeah, from, well, the, from no, the teams saw, that we know. From the teams that we know. I saw a third Amoongus. There's also like a Brute if you want to count Brute, but like. Eh. That Amoongus in sixth, I think, is also what most resembles our metagame like it has that same bulky gyarados that's so popular in our, in our meta right now like mm. you would this team is like one of the only ones that wouldn't feel out of place in a like mm -hmm. us day two mm -hmm. yeah no i that that that's accurate looking at this um though i don't think anybody over here runs choice scarf Dango. nobody <laughs> uh <laughs> uh but yeah um so we don't really have anything else to say about some of the rest of these teams so um because we don't have any more information but yeah. i do think that like i i mean i've always thought that like amoongus is stronger in open team sheet because you know like what you're running into what you can score what you can't and i think that like a lot of this is like very like strongly shaped by like you're mostly trying to get through closed team sheet 
if you don't go to one of the close teams you part you don't get a world's invite if you mm -hmm. don't do super well you don't get day two so it's like the travel award to win just one extra set of open team sheet you don't care you're aiming for close team sheet mm -hmm. and it's built with that in mind and it makes me wonder how much of this is applicable yeah i mean without open team sheet this is the worst generation yet for Mungus, right because suddenly anything can just turn grass and have safety goggles for that turn mm -hmm. and you can't see it coming so like if we did gone into this generation without open team sheet we probably would have seen Amoongus take a like a dive instead of becoming even yeah. more popular mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like maybe some of that gets like mitigated in like best of threes close sheet but yeah losing you're basically losing a whole turn or maybe even like a whole game depending on how you position yourself on a, a wrong call if they tear grass or like you called their goggles mon wrong and maybe that's also why like you see the goggles ape in Japan, that's going so far because like those turns turn into like really, really snowbally effects if the ape does anything right. So I would say that the goggles ape being more at the top is just like a sign of yeah, they just they just played the format better than the other person did. <laughs> yeah, way back in in San Diego, like Aaron, when we were testing with mostly clones team sheet, Aaron had to talk me into Amoongus still being a good Pokemon because I was like <laughs> I so discouraged with it in close team sheet testing yeah yeah no i feel that 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 uh it, it's like a, a double-edged sword you know like it um but at, at the very least yeah when we have uh open team sheet it does make a move a lot safer you know when what matchups it can come to and what mons it can spore you don't even have to waste the time um but yeah we do have more tools terra grass uh definitely still seems uh pretty popular i wouldn't be surprised to Terra Grass was like the second most popular, like generic Terra right now. I feel like Terra Water is everywhere, and maybe Terra Fairy is like surprisingly number one just because Fluttermane's like number one Pokemon, um, or mm -hmm. something. Uh, uh, could yeah. be Terra Ghost. Mm, Ghost is pretty um, common too. I feel like Ghost is probably fourth though. I feel like I'm gonna put it behind uh, those other ones. Okay, Terra Ghost. You got on Mousehold, Talonflame, some Chiyu, and all bun and like half of bundles. And pa and Pow. I don't know if you mentioned and Pow. Pow. I just feel like water is everywhere, though. In terms of non-stab terrors, yeah. there's like one or two water Pokemon per team, I feel like. Mm -hmm. And if you mentioned... Guys, this guys, guys, this is this is a new top content area. It's the terrors by usage. Terrors. And we play a guessing game. For each mod. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, yeah. I remember uh, back when, um, when VGC Pace was more active, the spreadsheet had this, like, just listed, like, what was the most common Terra. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So... Um, Maybe if that picks back up, we can always get that information. Uh, I think I saw some posts about Regulation D. Who knows? Um, let's go ahead and move on to talking about Fresno, though. Um, so Fresno took place this past weekend. Um, I'm seeing 285 players. Is that how many you guys had? Uh, after Yeah, just under yeah. 300, I think. Okay. 285. Still enough for two days. But that's still, yeah, still two days. Still, um... Still, um nine rounds in the first day and uh, a top 32 cut with a uh, five rounds of Swiss the second day and a top eight cut after all of that. Uh, but with less people does mean that some six and threes sneak their way in, um, uh, I believe into day two, right? I don't actually know how many. Yeah. There were like eight of them, seven. Okay. I think it was seven. Oh, okay. That's pretty sizable. Um, and we have the results here. Uh, Emilio won um, with a team of Flutterman Amoongus, Arcanine Bundle, King Gambit, and Iron Hands. I remember uh, saying to Burns when I saw that Emilio was at the tournament, uh, I was like, he's probably just running something boring with Iron Bundle on it. Like some standard team that hasn't had Iron Bundle on it yet with an Iron Bundle. And sure enough, it's just kind of like, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like uh, it, it's got the Luca. King Gambit, the the Terra Dark mm -hmm. Black class is one. The super damage output one. Um, and I think he used Bundle with that King Gambit in like a GC, but like, yeah, basically he just took like balance, put the Bundle on instead of your Gyarados or Palafin or whatever. Uh, and yeah, th this is this is Emilio's well, team. He just said he's gonna play your diff. I'd argue that like Emilio's team is like very centered around the King Gambit. Like more than anything else, and I think like it's trying to make that the central piece in the vast majority of its matchups. So like it plays a bit differently than uh, Palance, where like 
I don't know, like you're like sort of thinking like, okay, like what is the Pokemon I'm going to win with? And like you have a couple of options for it. I think that Amelia is like very committed to him. I know like there's a couple of games where he didn't bring it, but as far as I know, like in all the sets I've heard, like he brought King Gambit at least once. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he focused our whole match around it for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he. Okay. Uh, a lot of people are talking about the uh, the Specs Trick Room, of course. I I'm imagining that neither of you guys got to see that. Um, sounds like a rare tech. Um, I think it's a smart thing, even if you just never click it the entire tournament. It's a smart thing to make people think about for sure. constantly. Like, yeah. I think you can get more value out of Trick Room fourth move that you never click than you can out of a coverage move that you almost never click. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I feel that with open team sheet, you can make plays like that, uh, and that's really cool. Um, you could probably see some other interesting uh, support moves. Like, I know somebody else made a deep run. I think the Dondozo team in top eight here, uh, Kaylin Brown, had Specs Perish flutter um and so um i think that's a super interesting cool yeah. idea parish is another one i think uh protect on specs could also be legal um to you know i, I oftentimes yeah, I when mean, you see a specs pokemon in open team sheet in the lead you think well if i double target that pokemon i'm guaranteed to get some damage out and protect on his choice pokemon can work to just say well no that, that denies that option Right, and this isn't like the first time we've seen something like that. I remember someone, I forget who, in 2018 Worlds did pretty well with Protect Choice Bandulu. <laughs> um, I think that was also Emilio. That was also Emilio. Yeah, yeah. Um, yep, yep. Um, but yeah, I, I think the other thing to point out is uh, the Iron Hands uh, doing something that, honestly, I, I think a number of people have like, maybe run and like people have like talked about it but like not everyone feels comfortable saying that's legal but it, it is no wild charge uh, no thunder punch the electric move is volt switch and then there's heavy slam and i think that's really cool um definitely can um can make you a bit sad if you're staring down like a terror water azumarill or something and you can't just like ko it um fun fact i didn't read the team sheet correctly i didn't realize it had volt switch yeah you thought it was wild charge yeah, no, I just did a quick scan of it, and I saw the bolt switch, and I moved on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, oh, you mean you didn't know it was heavy slam, then? I guess, or no, no, no. Like, I sorry, I thought it was heavy slam. I didn't know there there was volt switch. I saw a heavy slam, and then assumed I knew the move set, and I think mm-hmm. like mentally didn't process like every single move. It's a, it's an yeah. important thing. Um, after playing so many open team sheet tournaments, is like you want to be able to go through them quickly. Sometimes you make some assumptions, and like you know, like if, if you see the assault vest, you don't actually like with your eyes read fake out you kind of just like okay i saw assault vest i know fake outs there um so you look for the key moves is it close combat or drain punch and so uh yeah sometimes that can happen at yeah, least I don't that's think you my experience to, to miss anything in particular you're often just like looking at open team sheets to fill in what are the weird things and you can like mentally acknowledge like oh it has volt switch and oh it has heavy slam and not ever collect oh it doesn't have yeah like, yeah looking for the missing mm-hmm. information is harder yeah um but no, i think that like with amelia was saying like i think that like no one else was i hadn't king gambit was not on my radar like anymore since i felt like we were in a meta of like oh iron hands is the dominant threat mm-hmm. what beats iron hands looking into things that build that so it's like people building around annihilate sure that makes sense to me it's like all those counters never in a million years would i thought oh yeah king gambit's the mon to be on the radar and i think if you look at it I think Emilio was the only Black Glasses King Gambit in the tournament. Yeah, that and that like... probably... Uh, actually, I think I should have opened this up, but um, Cut Explorer is up for Fresno. So we can go ahead and click on King Gambit, which I feel like I'm already having to scroll a bit. Yeah, six of them across of all top 64. Um, and yes, only Black Glasses was in fact the winner. And I have, I would have loved to see some stream game of that versus New Balance, and I have any idea of how the hell that matchup plays out. <laughs> I may have said the I'm same thing. About. That's what I'm curious about, and I'm sure it's excellent. Um, yeah. So I've suggested to, because uh, I asked, you know, how does this team beat Terrify or Swords Dance Hands, uh, which is on every New Balance team, and so I was mentioning that, you know, forcing it to Terra and Hydro Pump, I guess, is a way. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um. 
I, Can I, I say I, one more thing about the team? Of course. It doesn't have a hard dozo answer. Yeah, like a just like a haze, a clear smog, or something like that. Yeah. Yep. It does yeah. have I think like you are allowed to say that like everything that isn't King Gambit and even King Gambit is like bringable to a dozo matchup. You are either, you know, stalling turns on it with a fake out, hitting it with big special damage and outspeeding it with bundle flutter, um, Arcanine keeping it slowed down and then Amoongus, of course, just like keeping your team alive and maybe sporing the Dondozo if it's susceptible. Um, mm -hmm. So I do think that it's it definitely worth pointing out uh, that, yeah, sometimes you can just beat Dondozo by what we were talking about back in uh, Series 1, Gavin. Just hit it. <laughs> I love it. I know, it's really like um, we've really come full circle on the like the IQ curve meme. Of just like I just hit the Don Dozo. No, you need clear smog haze. Sacred just sword. Yeah, Dozo. just just hit it. Yeah, just play better, says Maluka. <laughs> True. I mean, yeah. So something that I'm like actually curious about, and this is not going to be shown in uh, the schedule, the record, or whatnot, is um, who actually took a game off of Emilio. Um, uh, Len, you played him in top eight. Were you able to take a game or no? I did not. He brought a different game plan than what I was expecting and was just like a step ahead of me the whole time. He played it really well. Mm -hmm. No, no. So Lexar mentions Chuppa. I do know that Chuppa um, won the set. Won the set. In Swiss, day one. Um, oh, Water, you said you took a game in round nine? Hmm? Water, right. who? Uh, Props. Props. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, what's your, uh, what's your, what team are you running? I, I actually, uh, don't I'm not familiar with uh, wait no water sounds familiar now that I'm thinking about what's it, but... your full name and three digits on the back <laughs> yeah I think it's just that's the thing is, like it sounds so weird to say it but like we do play a game where our full names are just kind of out there so like it's true. It's true. so yeah just go ahead and give us the 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 three on the back of your credit card or whatever and the social yeah. the social too um, Zach took a game in top four as well yes that that is like the one of the yes, things that stands out to me that. is uh that um and um yeah, for the um for the people that like drool over like balanced teams and stuff like that, like oh he he actually put eight EVs here instead of there. Um, you know, I, I do think that one thing to point out from that top four against Zach was like I did see the specs flutter outsped Talonflame and like one of his lines into Talonflame was e speeding it and then shadow balling it for a KO and um it, those like little distinctions are going to be the things to look out for on a uh, quote boring team from Emilio using you know six standard Pokemon is like you know he's got things like that he's got this standout Iron Hands with like you know no wild charge he's got the um, the Trick Room Flutter um, and yeah I, I mean like I also think that we haven't seen this exact six combination of them except so high when he like got top 33 at some tournament or something he was mentioning so um you know like I, we haven't seen this at the top of a tournament i guess iron hands king gambit uh is the main thing it's like the when i when i talk about balance teams um iron hands and king gambit often fill the same role as the meatball uh is what i like to call them just the the ball of stats the the hit trader uh usually a physical attacker like dragonite or one of these two they, they're just meatballs you know Sounds like Amelia's got two meatballs on his plate. He got two meatballs. <laughs> um, yeah. I also think it's really funny that um, Emilio, when he appeared on stream, his, um, what is it? When it tells your accomplishments, uh, he only listed his world's runner-up. He didn't list that he's won multiple regionals. I, so I was just like, come on, man. <laughs> I asked him about it. He was just being lazy. Oh really? Okay. I I was curious no, if it, it was like a little bit of like an ego thing. I just like nah. no, no. He was it, it always struck me as a laziness thing. Honestly, I was just like, yeah, you, I'm not gonna sit there and list all my accomplishments. Honestly, the the you interview know, afterwards was also really funny when he mentioned like he he just didn't give any shout outs to anybody in particular. He shouted out Luca for the King Gambit set, and then shouted out Ladder, and that was just so funny. Um, he did manage to like avoid saying like showdown because I don't think Emilio plays in game um and so he but he just said ladder generically ladder which is like yeah we, we have an in-game ladder we have a we have a showdown ladder 
but he didn't pull like a Joe UX nine where Joe Joe would definitely have said showdown in that position. <laughs> I'm not sure actually because like no shade I did on a show. no lot of Pokemon show. showdown. I don't remember seeing a team like Emilio's, which like mm -hmm. I'm not sure how like, much he's been playing or not. Like he he said he was yeah. doing a lot of ladder and that's where he got most of his practice, but um. As far as I know, like maybe it was just like a burst. Like he just kind of like you know, mm -hmm. three days before the event was like, all right, got to refine the team, and then just owned ladder yeah. and was like, yeah, I'm good. I remember running into the gambit a couple times playing Thursday, mm -hmm. but I don't know if it was the same six. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've spent enough time talking about Amelia though. We should uh, definitely talk about um. Place, skip right? Let's skip second. Oh, okay, uh, no, yeah. let's talk about huh? Um. <laughs> Gavin, I, is there anything new to say about the team? Um, the, it's running all of the same sets, I think. I'm curious. Um, was there any like was there what? any like moves that changed or from like the last time we saw this team? Oh. Uh, the last time you saw this team was when Ryan yoinked it. He was running Nasty Plot on it. I think Nasty Plot is worse. Um, I think that is pretty much it. Um, there's a whole contingent of rain people who were doing their own thing with Gothitelle over mm. Among Us. But I've mm. just been uh, sticking with this one. Um, I like its matchup spread into pretty much everything. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I, I honestly, it shows the, the strength of team familiarity, matchup familiarity, sticking with what you know, um, running that rain. Um, so yeah, I don't. I guess like that's why um, I don't. There maybe there's not much to say about the team because we've seen uh, this before. But you know, uh, anything that you want to mention about the the run briefly? Anything that like stood out? Was there like new stuff that made it harder for you, or was the matchup like was the meta actually weaker to rain? I wouldn't say it was. Uh, it was around what I expected. Um, I think that the team has a couple of limited matchups. Like, um, the Mouse Ape matchup is not, like, it has, like, one trick, and that's using the move trick, but, like, it doesn't really go much deeper than that, um, but, but, like, that was enough to get through it. Um, I was trying a few modes into New Balance, but ultimately, what ended up winning me games was just, like, what was shown on stream against, uh, Riley. Um, so the team felt, like, limited in a few matchups just in terms of like it's not like it has like a depth of options but it's just like those options were good enough to take it i think that like with more practice uh against it people can like start finding and exploiting holes into it but i think for the tournament it like wasn't it was on enough people's radar that they had game plans against it but i don't think there was like those game plans had like that much depth to them so it was still like relatively fine what's the trick target tier list against new balance um if you <laughs> so s tier is uh tricking a sword stance uh terra fire iron hands mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, a tier is tricking any other iron hands or the amoongus and then f is anything else if you oh. trick any of the other pokemon you're going to lose the game oh no shit high risk high reward baby but if you trick the Amoongus or the Iron Hands, then uh, pretty much all of the games kind of come down to this Amoongus Iron Hands versus Amoongus Iron Hands stalemate. But if they're tricked, no matter what they're locked into, you will always have the slight advantage. And Man, so that, that Amoongus Iron Hands stalemate against Riley, it just like... It was terrible. Oh my god, bro. Cool. Yeah, and I was playing to that. It was like, I know I edged this out slightly every single time. Not every single time, but it's like ridiculously in my favor. So it's just like, play to that. But if the trick goes off onto the Gyarados or the Tinglu, I'm not really sure how you get through. You probably have to actually like play well, which... Yeah. Gavin was going for the clean checkmate in 40. You know, it's just... <laughs> No, you see, there's a, this is a common end game. If you just trick the Iron that's, Hands, that's definitely what I felt watching that top four match. Though was that like as long as it's a Mungus or Hands that limits their options just enough in that one of those really extended games. If that game two, 
like y you seemed pretty far down at one point, but the 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 scarf on Amoongus just like kept causing him problems over and over again until you were back in it. Yeah, I could have played game two better. I was happy with how I played game three, but yeah, I think like that was like the most interesting aspect to the team, just because like I think that was like trick out allowed for a lot of like very counterintuitive uh, ways of just like winning some prevalent matchups. Yeah, going back to the whole tricking tier list thing, I do know that we talked about like the other Azumarill rain comps were running, running goth. Um, something I did way back in like 2015 was I would like trick a choice item onto like Cress while they were trick rooming, and then I would lock them in with like Mega Gengar. Mm -hmm. And then I would just like stall eight turns and they would have no move, right? We saw uh, that in the regional final this season, right? Didn't uh, Marcus win that way? I, I don't know. I, I wasn't oh, watching the European ones, funny. but if it is, then that's, yeah, that's exactly what I'm getting at. But. Uh, yeah, so my thought is that the goth on those teams is it's probably to like further a trick game plan where like, yeah, it's important that you get the right target, but also um, with having shadow tag on the field is just like making sure you're playing a 2v1. So it's like the reverse of a Don Dozo where you're forcing them to play a, a 2v1 and they're not forcing you to play a 2v1. I used, but it I didn't used really work very well, I think. I used Trick Rotom in San Diego and my favorite trick recipient was against Mouse Ape. You could trick onto the ape it would outspeed mm -hmm. the beat up for each fist for nothing and it's, <laughs> you would just beat up afterwards no That's literally great. into every single mouse ape i played the entire tournament like like the trick trick room line is so good because you mess up their combo and then it moves last on the second turn and then you can kind of just like keep it in a state where it can't stall out the trick room mm -hmm. and it's like it's exploitable but not that exploitable because like in order to beat up, the, in order to get rid of the trick trick room, you have to mess up your mouse ape combo, and at that point, it's just like their individual Pokemon, not like mouse ape. I gotta watch out for Vern. He's trying to take my mic off the table. Okay. Um, <laughs> he's being your little accord manager. He is kind of a little bit. I um, he's attacking the mouse. Um. <laughs> As they, okay. as cats do, as cats do, as they do. Um, but yeah, speaking of mouse ape, we got uh, Zach's team here in um, in top four. Uh, ended up taking a game off of Emilio, but losing the set. Um, with a team of Fluttermane, Talon, uh, Screamtail, Annihilate, Goldengo, and Mousehold. We actually saw the um, this team last weekend in Milwaukee, and it was um. I think it was similar. I can't remember. There might have been like a Chiyu. Yeah, the... Chiyu over a Golden Go. Yeah. Um, and yeah, bringing back the, the Goldie here uh, with, funnily enough, make a, a nasty plot Terra Blast. Uh, no Shadow Ball. And it, uh, yeah, made it all the way to the top four this time. Um, it, it's a pretty interesting team. I think the, the standouts here, uh, as Gavin was kind of highlighting earlier, is Mouse 8 plus Talonflame. And then the, uh, the, uh screamtail is also a major thing because um yeah sometimes the only way that you can take care of the annihilate after you've taken out the mouse hold is by hitting it with the strongest move your one pokemon has available and encore or disable can really limit counterplay into annihilate i think it's a really strong thing to uh have available well, to we, you if we get way more specific about it it's very strong into specs flutter as well right like as the mm -hmm. mouse player you don't want to be facing down specs dazzling gleams but if you or or moon blast but the scream tail like limits that pokemon so much mm -hmm. it's a choice especially you know um open team sheet uh you know exactly which pokemon are choiced you can just completely stuff them if uh you just opt to protect on both of your pokemon for a turn uh then they are forced to switch or do nothing and that that's awesome um or you can I... go a layer deeper and uh, not even click it. I, I've, I, I, that's also the fun part about uh, open team sheet is sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you're like so scared of it that you switch out already, and then they don't even have to click it because you're just respecting it because you know, uh, it's this, it's just the beauty of open team sheet. I think one thing that Mouse Ape does so well is just try to like catch you slipping on like a protect on a tempo, and it's just like really using protect super well, and that's what I like about this team is that. Um, yeah, you get some safe stuff by guaranteeing it with the Screamtail, but it has five protects on it. Mm -hmm. And it is all about kind of like playing that mind game of um, what's protecting, what's not. 
baiting out opponents protects and everything like that it, it punishes mistakes like no other because um yeah every single move you make has to be very calculated you know if you're going for the same move twice in a row you have to you know run the calculations am i okay with getting disabled this turn or you know if you click a move and scream tails in the back but it could switch in on a ko or switch in and tank the hit am i okay being encored in this move it's a it's a lot of mental calculus yeah i mean you saw things like alberto not clicking acrobatics into the annihilate that didn't protect and so this is game two and alberto could have just won the set um and he doesn't do that because he doesn't want to just take protect and then get disabled in acrobatics. We tailwinds instead. Like mm -hmm. it gives up. Uh, like the, the tailwind just gets matched and he's way down. Yeah. Like even without ever clicking the button, that disable probably won that yeah. game. I think that it it like really um, enables Zach's strengths as a player, which is good for those like annoying mind games that where he's very okay risking the entire game on turn one. Zach was using like Parish uh, plus Tatsugiri for a long time. And that whole team, you basically play just like, yeah, they know that you're trying to protect Tatsugiri. So you just never protect the Tatsugiri and play like you have five Tatsugiris in back. <laughs> yeah. And like if they double into it and read, you shake their hand and go next. Yeah. I got. I get the advice that he played that way before our first game in Vancouver. I just doubled the Tatsu on turn one, and he like I fefed on turn two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's what he does, and he's like willing to like put that pressure on. And it's like you're gonna have to get calls right against mm -hmm. it in order to win. So it's just very scary. It always works until it doesn't. <laughs> um, Riley ended up getting top four with uh, mm -hmm. New Balance. New Balance. I, wow, there's probably so many interesting decisions here on all of the Pokemon and so much nuance. Let's go next. Um, Chubba, Wait, can I say one thing about Riley? <sighs> oh my gosh. Oh, Riley? Sure, yeah. So, uh, in Orlando, in the last round of Swiss, Riley played Mike D'Angelo and then scooped because he said, I'm not going to any more tournaments this year. I'm not going for a Worlds invite. <laughs> And then he decided, actually, never mind. And then, like, booked last minute flights to, like, Milwaukee and, like, came to Fresno and everything. And then got a world's invite. I, I played Riley. He, I, that's honestly so respectable. Just, you know, he decided, actually, I'm going to make this happen and did. Um, and he's gotten, like, 390 CP off of only regulation C. He, um, I played him in the last round at Milwaukee uh, in the. Um, I guess winning in, I was it was a pair down, and I was like probably gonna make it in on resistance, but just didn't want to risk it. So, um, so we ended up playing a close set. Uh, I think he had a Excalibur over mm -hmm. Tinglu. Not that important. Still boring balance. Whatever, man. Moving on. Choppa using um, his choice of two Earthquakers. I think this is the thing that everyone was looking at this team. And they're like, is that allowed? I guess, yeah. There's no there's no limit on Earthquake. Uh, he's got uh, Garchomp and Great Tusk. Um, and then the uh, the dreaded Pow Knight with multi-scale and uh, Terra Normal uh, extreme speeds. Uh, we've got Specs Goldie and Talonflame. It's just a very offensive, aggressive team. I feel somewhat like culpable for double Earthquakers because I knocked... I gave Chuff his fourth loss in Milwaukee by just clicking Rock Slide for five turns. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> That's how I, you do it, though. I've got word from the man himself. Great Tusk was really just there to pin down uh, Terra Fire Iron Hands. And it's like basically thinking that, like, okay, against Terra Fire Iron Hands and Terra Grass Iron Hands, you need different answers for them because nothing actually beats both of them. Um, but that Great Tusk was pretty ass. And that, like, I don't think he brought it very much. Gotcha. Okay. Well, then, honestly, uh, Ow aside, it just kind of feels like a Series 1 Tailwind Spam team, you know? Just, like, I'm here to click Earthquake with my Garchomp, make it rain with my Specs Goldango, and I'm just doing big spread damage for three turns, and then I'll do it again if you don't KO this talent <laughs> Um Yeah. Um, also, yeah, Lexar points out that it was made by Jesse, so shout-outs to Jesse for the team. I remember Chuppa saying something like that uh, in the tweet. A couple of people were running this team. Um, yeah, it's a it's a different brand of Tailwind offense, and uh, I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, we definitely should talk about uh, Kalen Brown's team, because Kalen went 9-0 and in Swiss um, with, as we mentioned earlier, the Choice Specs Parish Song Flutter. Um, 
Trick Room on Emilio's team was maybe to scare off other teams from going Trick Room or scare off Tailwind teams from going too fast, I guess. Whereas this one, the uh, Parish Song is likely to threaten the option of perishing your Tatsugiri, getting in the Dondozo, and then actually being able to play 2v2 with a boosted Dondozo. No psych up synergy or anything like that. Not, not hard dedicated to this strategy at all. But, I mean, if Dondozo had a Pokemon next to it instead of nothing, it would definitely be scarier. And it works because, you know, it, with that self-perish strategy, you're going to switch Flutter the next turn anyway to put Tatsu in, in Dozo's mouth, so it doesn't really matter if it's choice. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, you're not going to click Perish again. Um, and yeah, Perish is also just a good move. Perish, you know, can lock up endgames and such. Uh, force a boosted Pokemon to switch out. Uh, beat other Dondozo. Um, yeah, Abe points out that this is basically just Palance, but with a Dondozo mode, and I kind of think that's true. Um, also worth noting is the... the the Dragon Fang on Tatsugiri, like, I was looking around and I was like, Sash is available, but Draco needs to hit harder, apparently. Um, so what that is, is um, it's a super bulky Tatsugiri. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea there is just like, yeah, you can run Sash, but like, it's so easy to take chip anyways, that it's just like better to like be bulky enough to take the big hits. But if you take those big hits, you lose enough special attack that then the Draco Meteor lacks a bit of oomph. Take a look at that. I think on previous iterations he had bright powder on so it. So this is the same this... person. I was curious on that. I okay, thought bright powder. <laughs> as soon but... as I saw that this was Bax Arcanine Dozo, I thought, well, that's a weird item on Tatsugiri. Is this the bright powder uh Datsugiri person? It's the same yeah. person. So this is slightly less troll. I think really interesting thing about this team is this is like the first successful um, I mean the one he did previously too, of the Terra Steel uh Lum slash safety goggles dozo, which is basically saying Everyone and their mom is running Clear Smog, Amoongus as like their Dondozo answer. Hi, mom. Um, <laughs> and that lets you consistently beat it and deal with it. And also, when you might notice, is Rock Slide on there, which is just to make sure that Gyarados isn't like totally walling it out, which otherwise a lot of the common Dondozos have an issue with, unless you run Order Up, and you don't want to be running Order Up right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll have to keep that in mind in case I uh, know I'm going to be playing against Mrs. Michaels. But <laughs> yeah, Heavy Slam, Terra Steel, that's cool. It's something that we've been seeing a bit more uh, recently as opposed to earlier in the year. And I like that. Um, Halbax, yeah. The, um, it's funny that Adi isn't actually on here because everyone's mentioning that, yeah, he, uh, he did a team report with Adi on the channel. So I guess... I'm supposed to do the Audi thing. If you want to look at the team report, oh my goodness, exclamation YT, there's the YouTube channel. I'm sure it's on there somewhere. Um, but um, but yeah, uh, th this is just kind of crazy. I mean, like, also, like, Dondoso, I just, Dondoso Amoongus is, like, two Pokemon that, like, you never see together, at least. Uh, you don't see yeah. them often, and so it's cool uh, to see a team that's just blending two styles together and doing it well. I like to yep. think that he ran clear smog and Moongus because he didn't have a Dondozo answer either. <laughs> right, right. Well, we had the Parish Song. Maybe the Parish Song could come in clutch. Mm -hmm. Parish Song, go into your own Dozo, and then it's over. Um, Alberto running a team that we don't really need to mention because he ran it back. It's he, the same uh, team. He, he's the he's same doing team. it again, and uh, I got to respect that. I mean, this team is very fun. Uh, he's been, he's a big fan of the keys. He was actually on the other side of the bracket, um, from Gavin, I think. Yeah. I was like, what mm -hmm. if we see the, the rain versus keys run back, uh, technically both running different teams than, than yeah. that, but it would have been awesome. Um, and Alberto, yeah, Al Alberto before every single match was just like, oh no, my matchup into this is terrible. And then like <laughs> pointed out like one or two things there was. Except for the one against me when he spent the entire day two going, I just want to play Lynn this round. I just want to play Lynn this round. <laughs> and they got me in round five and they put us on stream for me to lose horribly to the Corviknight I can never kill. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, that was the one matchup he didn't complain about. He cheered for it. He, he manifested it. <laughs> Truly. A man who knows how Tom works. <laughs> um... I think that with Alberto's stuff, one thing I started to see a bit more this weekend is him benching the Klefki in a lot of these matchups and kind of relying on just like 
having a lot of damage and then like being able to play mind games of am i going to protect or am i going to attack right like especially with like the sash flutter and the chiyu and like the roaring moon it does involve it does mean that like even if these matchups are bad quote unquote like you can force mind games and just get to good positions or you can have bulk up corvinite into a team that has like no way of possibly hitting it that also does work true um yeah i think it's interesting he like tweeted saturday like for an ic someone I have an intervention and stop me from using Klefki again and then went on to top eight the tournament. <laughs> Not gonna be me, because I love that guy. I love Klefki. True, true. John's a fan of the keys. Uh all right, we made Len wait long enough. Len, let's talk about this sand team. It's got apparently some like iconic Pokemon, uh Lentar, as people like to refer Lentar! to it. Um Garchop with leftover sub sand veil. Um well, yeah, why don't you go ahead and walk us through it? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I feel like a little bird that evolved on an island somewhere away from, from everything else, so just using Sublefty's Garchomp and Max Special Defense Titar yep, for yep. the last 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, I like feel very comfortable with these Pokemon. I'm a big proponent of like comfort in in teams. Um, when I had a 2018 NAIC run with like a very similar team, other people tried to pick it up, and it went like badly for them because i don't think the team was objectively good in any way um but i knew all the matchups and i think there's a big advantage to having one-sided matchup knowledge mm -hmm. i i think when you're a player who kind of just sticks to what's comfortable then you're a little bit at the whim of the current meta and you know right mm -hmm. now things are a little bit in my favor things have gone well the last few weeks because what i was going to use you know, Garchomp and Titar anyway, probably. And right now they're they're actually good Pokemon. Um, and the team's easier to pick up. You saw Aaron had success with it after just like uh, a handful of, of games of prep. Mm -hmm. um, because it has a little bit better matchup spread. There's like a clear game plan to stuff like New Balance. Yeah, I was like, if you just kind of, you know, not only, you know, had your own success uh, seeing a top eight with this, but, you know, dumped it on Aaron, uh, in, you know, in the week leading up, and Aaron was able to, you know, clutch that invite with it after a 0-1 start. I definitely think there's some merit uh, to the team and strength uh, right now. I think that's awesome. Um, yeah, because when you're using Pokemon that are slower than Garchomp and Sand is up, it is a massive headache because <laughs> it's mind games that are super in the Garchomp's favor of is it going to protect, is it going to Earthquake, or is it going to sub, and are you going to even hit any of your moves into it? And yeah, so I mean, it's such an easy play to click sub, make someone make the read to break it, because if they think you're going to protect and sit mm -hmm. just leave the sub up, then they're in big trouble. And then their reward for that is an 80% chance to have still not just been in trouble. <laughs> and the, if they're right, all they've done is deal, you know, 18% damage to Garchomp that I'll probably just heal off in a couple of turns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it is pretty evil, uh, yeah. like in a good way. Of course. Of course. Yeah, someone who's built like teams around the whole gimmick of uh, weather dodge abilities, which thank God Rain and Ton don't have these. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it is like infuriating if you miss. It, it goes back to the whole like uh, cost per turn. Like we were talking about how oh your, your Moongus calls the Terra wrong and close team sheet. That's a whole action you lost there, and it might cost you the game. Garchomp is like the same, and it's even worse in this scenario if you have sub lefties protect. Because it is just going to do something, but you have to kind of call what it's doing, and then even then you're still, like, not a guaranteed you're going to get the turn at, like, a favorable position at the end game. So, yeah, Garchomp Sands sand, sand's good. Like, genuinely an enormous problem for me in the top 8 match against Emilio is, like, a side effect of a move probably no one's really thinking about when team building, but I'm just really needing to get Garchomp and EQ into Gambit without losing it in exchange by to Kowtow. But Kowtow can't miss into Sandville. Mm. So he can just break oh. the sub for free the entire match. And like, if I trade Garchomp for Gambit, I can never kill the hands. And it's like very difficult to play out of like, I can't, Honestly. I can't just wait for these misses. Yeah, who all, who all forgot that move doesn't miss? Yeah, there's like I, I definitely three different remember. that don't miss. <laughs> I definitely remember making fun of it because I was like, this is the third dark type move they printed that can't miss. They did, um, what's the original? Feign attack. Feign attack. Um, then they gave Grimmsnarl 
one that you've never seen honestly like trivia question can anybody name the if you know it don't speak up i want to see maybe gavin doesn't know it. i feel like gavin false surrender gavin does have it yeah but... it's called false surrender grimstar got two signature moves for no reason then they ended up um getting uh spirit break onto one other pokemon is it just uh iron valiant yeah no iron valiant yeah everybody got got on iron valiant yeah i was curious if anything else got spirit break um false surrender is still grim snarl's move though um so yeah i mean grim snarl had it before king gambit why isn't it broken on grim snarl it doesn't make any sense to me um but anyway yeah i that's just so funny to me um another thing uh that i want to mention that like i i'm sure most people are well aware of but um it's just always fun is like Lycanroc can run Terra Ghost and get knocked down to Sash just because Sand Rush makes you immune to sand damage. I think that's actually... Uh, it's it, You can thank uh, Cacnea and Cacturn for that one um, because they... Wait, no, not, not them. No, uh, you gotta yeah, thank... Wait, wait, um, wait they have Sand it's Veil. Vale. It's the dog. The dog, it's Stoutland. Big, big Herdier, Stoutland. Oh, yeah. okay. You can thank them for that one because they were not... Um, they were not one types that would be immune to sand, but they uh, were. They wanted them to be immune to sand, I guess. Someone please start a letter writing campaign to Game Freak for Sand Veil, Sandstream to get the same treatment, though. Yeah, that's the thing. It takes too much free damage, and I don't that appreciate is it. How I learned that our Titar and Ozumir will speed tied. Oh, that's sand so chip. funny. Sand chip. Yeah. Sand, sand chip on the Titar, revealing Titar speed is is definitely a, a Gen 9 mechanic. <laughs> oh, Sand Force. <laughs> Also, and of course, also, yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's a, yeah. That's the fun one. Is that like all of these sand build, abilities? Um, you know, if if Lens Garchomp was like Terra Water or something, it wouldn't take sand damage. Um, but Titar, the Sand Setter itself, if it does decide to go grass, it starts eating away at its own health, and that's so funny. Um, so yeah. Let's see. Are there any other um standout teams? Um, it's funny that actually I'm looking now with Alberto and Len's team on top of each other. Two Corbinites. Oh yeah, I want to I want to point out uh, as a you know Garchomp fan from day one of forever ground supremacy. There were three Garchomps in the top eight: one Great Tusk mm-hmm. and one Tinglu. Garchomp stays king. Garchomp's back, yeah. baby. Garchomp's back. We're so bad. Do do not look at Great Tusk conversion rate over the last couple of tournaments. That is <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, there's a couple of teams, I know you don't like balance, but there's a couple of balance teams that I think, like, or balance-ish teams that I thought did do some interesting things for pretty well. Like, Neil throwing back with the palance, which, um, is, was otherwise, like, almost extinct in the US, mm-hmm. with, um, we got, like, bulk up safety goggles on the palafin, and mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's running it back, but like given in the context of like, oh, it feels like Palafin died and we're just not talking about it, <laughs> it's like interesting to see. Yeah, and... yeah. Oh, Paul. Yeah, it kind of did die though. Did you not see the tweet? I mean, Paulins is a good name for it, Rafa. I got to admit, I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good, and, actually. Um, the... Yeah, yeah. Yes. And then there's one other team I thought was interesting, which was uh, Patrick Dungan. Which is like, I mean, it's impressive to get top 16 while retired from VGC. Mm-hmm, that's true. Well, he did say that he was going to play out the season, I think. Yeah, he's not retired yet, guys. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. We got to, we're going to save that for our, uh, our second podcast where we talk about all the players like it's like a sports podcast or something, you know, like yeah. what, what, and, what kind of prospects do they have for next season? Is Gavin going to stay on the West Coast? I could be wrong on this, but I think this is the first time that Patrick has won money from an event too. Let's go. Well, congratulations to him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good shit. Um, I um, retire between events, says Dane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So true. So true. I mean, I honestly had a little bit of a retirement earlier this season. If we're being, if we're being honest. After uh, after London, I was like, we're we're so done. And then after Milwaukee, we so back. Um, okay. And what Patrick was doing was the combination of like Grim Snarl and set up hands and set up Goldie, which isn't like a new concept. Um, shit. Uh, who got top eight in Hartford? Oh, you're that? talking about was... the, uh, the neon. Yeah. Team. Yeah. The neon team that uh, Dominique Johnson uh, was using. And like, I feel like you can see like a kind of like direct line from that 
uh to what patrick ended up using mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah i think that uh yeah it's also they both have uh the same four there the ting lu grim snarl iron hands and gold dango um yeah it's th- it's just kind of funny because like the oranguru is the iconic mon there and you're just saying nah this is kind of ass <laughs> yeah no i mean honestly respect it <laughs> yeah, um, yeah yeah grim snarl was the the takeaway uh grim snarl plus set up hands and set up goldie uh, Honestly, I, I kind of want to try Grimmsnarl on my own, just like maybe not like bringing it to same thing, but I do think Grimmsnarl well has kind of been slept on like the whole the whole year, and people are just like, yeah, screens aren't it this year because I mean like, you don't really need it like yeah. But I mean, Alberto did, did just win like JCS, and it like Patrick took it to like ten or fourteenth year too. And Al- so and like Alberto with a different Alberto's got Pokemon. the different screens, yeah. And like so there screen, was the Reflect maybe... Stantler. Don't Honestly, forget yeah, the Reflect yeah. Stantler. Oh, you gotta put some name, respect on the respect reflect Stanley. <laughs> yeah, I am good. a bit surprised at how much success it can have because it seems like with Flutter everywhere, it's a very easy game plan to just make them choose one screen, kill Snarl and kill Grim on turn one, and then just fight with the other. And this is what it uh, did two games against Patrick, right? Like if you like even if you trade away Flutter, if the team is built around having screens and you limit them to one and then just go after them from the other side, it's very difficult to play the game. Well, the mm-hmm. thing is, is the uh, the team does have ways to make up for it in both directions with Gyarados and Ting Lu. So at the very mm-hmm. least, you can uh, get up the, the screen that's appropriate for the current situation and then maybe rely on yeah. the other Pokemon to make up that ground, I guess. It's not always going to work, but that's just, I guess, a fun idea. Damn like, I do, I do feel screen. like Patrick's team does have enough other Pokemon that like you lead it next to Grimmsnarl and you're basically saying, Hey, I'm going to get my screen. You can kill my Grimmsnarl, but I am going to kill your flutter in return. Cause I think you do need to tear a fairy in order to actually Oko the Grimmsnarl. Uh, mm-hmm. At least that's my, that's my mental calc anyway. If they put yep. a light screen anyway. So you basically are just like saying, yeah, I'm going to trade my Terra and my flutter for your one screen instead of two screens. I don't know. That's, that's exactly the trade I made in both games. <laughs> and, it, and it worked out just fine. Yeah, it's like, I this was a value trade. trade. I'm, not saying, I'm not saying it's like good for the Grimstone player. I'm just saying that's maybe their their game plan, and they're hoping their game gets... And I do it again. <laughs> um, last team that I think that deserves a shout, it was on stream, was uh, VJ, uh, VJ Sood. Um, hope I'm saying that right. Um, with, a, uh, with a team of... I mean, every Pokemon here is just like... Like when the most common Pokemon on your team is Azumarill, um, it's a that's a real head scratcher. Uh, honestly, I don't really want to. Wow, that's choice band Braviary. I, I don't want to <laughs> dive into all the sets. Uh, I also I thought this was Specs Flutter. Wait, this whole time when we were watching it, we were like, oh yeah, that thing's locked in. It's just four attacks booster. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, don't you see? It's supposed to synergize with all his Steel types. Um and to, yeah, telepathy, sludge wave, steel type, steel type. It's beautiful. Um, wait, is yeah. he three choice item? No, he's not. Okay. <laughs> no scarf. Weirdly, weirdly enough, no scarf. Um, is two choice one vest and then like one protect on the whole team though? Man, I honestly, uh, <laughs> man, this was another thing that was fun about some of the um the big data that vgc paste was doing is you could see what the most common items were and i remember mystic water was like a top six item i feel like that's probably not the case anymore (laughs) yeah i all right a couple other teams i want to mention yeah um jimmy friedel is using a sun team without sun yeah and then the palapins there um wait could not for the life of me tell you how this team works Honestly, this is, uh, wait a minute. Jimmy Friedel. I think Jimmy Friedel was at a Chicago local. I think I played Jimmy, Jimmy at the, because I remember playing this Palafin Tailwind team at the Chicago. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Jimmy Friedel was at the Chicago local I played like two weeks ago, or three, four, five <laughs> weeks ago. Um, yeah, with this exact so- team. Um, that is really funny. Um, what it reminds me of is some of the Series B uh, Talon Tusk like uh, Brute Bonnet stuff. Like Aaron got top four with in Vancouver mm-hmm. that had been really uh, like dominant on the 
like in-game ladder. You can see a lot of resemblances here. Like that was also like Bonnet and and Tusk, no sun, um, and and just playing offensively through Bonnet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that makes sense because in Tailwind, like you can make brute Bonnet outrun uh, Flutterman, right? Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. If Corviknight can do it, then anything can. <laughs> <laughs> Big Corv. Big Corv. Um, yeah, so before we move on, is there any other teams that you wanted to mention, Gavin, or anybody else? Um, I think Joseph Selmer is the last team that we haven't talked about because, like, what's kind of funny is there are three teams in top 16 that were also in top eight. You can see a lot of, like, mm. different, like, groups were together. Um, Joseph Selmer is, like, uh, doing it for the Snail fans. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Honestly, though, um, I mean, this, this Pokemon's not seen much anymore. Oh, Leaf Shout Shadow. out to all the Snail true this is a team that like if anyone showed to me in good consciousness i would tell them was ass but like it is clearly working for him double ruin glim it's it's dozo stall it's it's double defense ruin yeah yeah um that's that's kind of awesome um we see the citrus berry over there the assault best thing yeah yeah no why not um yeah, I think Leaf Storm is definitely a standout to me. And Order Up, as we were talking about, Order Up's very rarely seen these days, and uh, this team decided that they could make it work. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, um, let's uh, let's go ahead and take a little break from Regulation C. We're not done with it, unfortunately. We'll have to come back for NAIC, of course. Um, but let's take a little peek at Regulation D. We've got some... Uh, some people who I don't know if we've got the Regulation D takes from, so I'm, I'm hoping to get some uh, some insights. Maybe you guys haven't thought about Regulation D much at all. Maybe you're too focused on the tournaments at hand. But at the very least, um, honestly, the, this tournament took place over the, the past weekend, this Nino, and I'm not too concerned with talking about like who won, who uh, got top eight or stuff. I'm, I'm more interested in going to the, the metagame tab uh, to talk about what Pokemon are making early appearances at the top uh, already at this tournament, uh, which I guess I should see... How many people played in it? Does it tell me somewhere? Um, I could just scroll to the bottom of the standings. There's like a uh, two hundred uh, something. Yeah, right? one fifty is what I'm seeing ish. Uh, um, maybe not. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There was like two hundred initially signed up, then like one fifty show up. Yeah. And yeah. already we see Urshifu Water is uh, at the top. Um, Urshifu Water with um, yeah, eighty three ish appearances and mm -hmm. um. Yeah, already over Flutterman. I think that's just like so nuts. Another thing is well, like we kind it, of... it's it's top cut conversion is like only a little bit better than Flutter's. Like they're basically in the same spot at this point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you look at the top cut versus the Swiss rounds, um, tabs at the top, the top cut rounds like Flutter is above, but mm -hmm. they're basically sharing the same. Yeah, usage, they're, they're, so. they're trying to share the crown right now. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, everyone's just immediately flocking to Urshifu Water. And, um, yeah, Ursaluna, definitely still a common Pokemon. Um, Tornadus. Uh, I'm also... excited to see Heatran there. That's probably the Reg D Pokemon I'm most excited to, to get building mm -hmm. around. Yeah, Heatran going to be very good. A very good use of Terra. We saw how strong Armor Rouge was with its Flash Fire. Yeah, he ran the new armor rouge. A little bit. You. A little armor bit. Armor with a four X fairy resist. Yes, yes, that's true. And it's not weak to Shadow Ball, so um, just a nice, nice uh, Pokemon to have in the the toolbox. Um, One thing I think is interesting is um, Amoongus beats like the top two Pokemon in usage and loses to literally every other Pokemon. It does feel very hard to uh, like. Oh, Amoongus is gonna be he doesn't, doesn't lose to Landorus, right? <laughs> uh Until yeah we get the terrifying terror blast ones. terrifying terror blast <laughs> might be might be something well i just choose not to see it honestly i choose not to see it. <laughs> I could... and then reggie lucky honestly i think so reggie lucky i know this is just like one tournament but reggie lucky's win percentage was 44 which is like i don't know that's pretty notably below uh the median the the middle the middle like, numbers yeah but it, it had a zero conversion rate None. Oh, none made it to cut. No, there are no Regieleki in cut. So I, I think this mon as you will. I think this mon is chalked. I think this mon's done. Take that as you will. Um, it seemed to have won, like a lot of games, but it, it did lose more games and none in cut. 
I don't know, guys. This might be uh, might not be his day. I also don't see any thunderous in this cut either. Dude, there's only four tanks. Man. Everybody's just like, I... I've got new ground types. I'm gonna play with them. Landers and Crystal. I don't think that we can say too much about what the meta will shape up or for what's actually like that like going to be that dominant. Just so much as like, I think that like Urshifu Rapid Strikes immediate damage of one shotting the format is going to be like the most obviously strong thing, and then it'll take a while for us to figure out how to actually deal with it. Mm -hmm. And like carefully crafted speed control teams with Regilecki Iron Bundle Tornadus that will do everything in their power to get speed advantage like those will come but it'll take a while to fully come out until then urshifu rapid strike over yeah urshifu rapid strike is going to be a major threat i think that's a good way to put it is that like it'll be dominant for a while until we kind of like reel it in i mean fluttermane while it's still like a top usage pokemon is something that like every team has a response to at the very least, if they're, if they're going to make it to the top, if they're going to win a tournament, they know what they're going to do into the Pokemon. It's still going to be on that team, too. But, uh, but yeah, I think that Urshifu Water might fall into a similar uh, situation where, yeah, you might just end up having to run it, but, um, but yeah, everyone's going to start to start to craft their answers, and that's what these next couple of months are going to be about, is, like, you know, figuring out which Pokemon they have to address and uh tournament online tournaments like this are going to be the ones to look at they're going to be bigger ones with more prizing on the line and that way you'll get more good players drawn out to play and start to reveal what what's cooking and we'll uh get to see what people are trying to do to respond to that yeah i do think like from a um a threats standpoint as we're mentioning it does seem like it, it's like a mix of like all the different formats that i might have been like have played before. You've got the Chen Pao Dragonite from Regulation C. You've got Heat Ran and Crest from like, you know, Gen <laughs> Six. You've got Urshifu from Gen Eight. Except it's this not an All Star season. It's it, an All Star it season. There's so many cool stuff, like cool things being used. You know, new faces, old faces, like, um, like a Suin Lilligan new face, but it's like basically the same face with a different <laughs> coat of paint. Like, so. I don't know. It, it's going to be exciting. Gudra's finally good. I'm saying that tentatively because I don't actually know if it's good, good yet, but I, I have high hopes for that Mon. So I'm just going to, you know, keep seeing these come up and then try my best to throw things at the wall and hope they stick. That'll let me be the fun part of this format. Yeah, we are definitely still missing some important tools, as Abe points out. Uh, Insin, the Tapus and stuff. We don't have everybody. Uh, True. But... If we had Tapu Coco, man, what a format. It would be. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, honestly, we still are missing a uh, a misty terrain setter. We don't have anything to do, to do that. Yeah, I dream of Feeny. We're also <laughs> missing all the ultra beasts. Yeah. Oh yeah. Some, yeah. Of the, some of those ultra beasts would be mega, mega impactful, especially with Terra, Terra Fire, Cartana. What are you gonna do? Yo, imagine a format you have like three Celestelas. You already have Gudra. Now you're gonna have and, and Wo uh, Yeah. Wo Chien, and then you have actual Celestela, and you yeah. have Rillaboom. If I find anyone who's using not Rillaboom, um, Chestnut. That's the one. Some of the other like uh, big winners from again just this tournament um, were Dragonite and Indeedy. Those were Pokemon that saw uh, pretty decent win rates um, for Pokemon with like a respectable amount of uses. Um, another big loser was Torkoal. Uh, Torkoal teams like I, I I think it's just because like people love to put Torkoal on bad teams. They're like, oh, I'm gonna get my Trick Room up, and it's gonna be easy GG, baby. Like, it's over. As soon as I get up Trick Room and click Eruption, and then it's like, oh, Heatran's back. Oh, Heatran's back. No! <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> if you go those... down a little further, Sneasler's there, too, but... Oh, Sneasler's gonna be the casual... People... This, this mod would even, <laughs> though, but people are gonna love Sneasler. Like, they, Rillaboom, Grassy Seed, let's go! I Honestly, though, it, it's been a funny Pokemon. Uh, I think that mod might be okay. Um, it's it's gonna be, fine. like, certifiably okay. Not broken, not bad, but, like... I think it's slightly better Halucha. So, I think if you thought Halucha was, like, niche, <laughs> then this will be slightly less niche. Slightly, slightly more usable, yeah. Oh, actually, if you scroll down right below Sneasler, uh, Urshifu Dark was in here, and um, it, I think, it did make it to second, but everybody else that was using it was not doing too hot. Um, 
But yeah, um, what was I gonna mention? Um, so this this other thing that I'm curious about, uh, for both of you guys, um, and uh, I think actually I don't know if I got the chance to uh, ask Len about this in Milwaukee, but yeah, Gavin, Len, um, mm -hmm. John, I actually don't know if you've given your take on this on the podcast too. Are you guys for or against worlds being in a new format? Obviously, we don't have a say in like it's it's already you know going to be happening uh there's no changing it but worlds you know this is the first time worlds is going to be in a new format and it's something that's been incredibly divisive uh in the community i've seen plenty of people on both sides and so i thought it was worth revisiting this uh topic uh, especially as we've had a couple more uh i guess it's like a week or two now since the announcement but yeah uh i guess like let's just go around i'll, I'll grab gavin first gavin what do you think I'm neutral on it being a new format. I'm anti it being this format. Yeah, so that's a, so I'm glad that you brought that up right away is um I want to kind of like yeah, ignore that part of it is like the format aside, if this was the best format we we're ever going to play, the worst format we we're ever going to play. Um my take is always that every format is fun for the first tournament. Uh mm -hmm. so at the very least, I think Worlds will be fun because it's a brand new format and we won't realize why it sucks. Uh, maybe we will because it's going to have two months to grow, but I'm rambling and I'm giving my own takes. Gavin, uh, yeah, do you have anything else to say on it? I think that there's nothing inherently wrong with Worlds being a new format. I can think of several years where Worlds might have been a bit better if it was like a brand new format. Mm -hmm. um, I think like part of it, what it is, is like VGC isn't really a game where you're trying to get like years of like mastery and like really like getting into all the minutia of it it's like think of it as a game that has constant patches it's just a matter of like figuring out like what to do for that meta and like there's going to be patches that you like more but it's like you move on and you just try to like do what's best with it so mm -hmm. i think i don't have a problem with it okay okay uh len what do you think yeah i'm, I'm strongly for it and for like an entertainment factor world so i think it's going to make worlds be more interesting to watch to see what teams are like rise up out of that without an established meta where you just have expectations for that i think it is more difficult for players like this puts a lot of stress on prep in the last couple months of the season it's harder to rest on laurels from the like earlier part of the season especially with like also needing to travel to japan a lot of players like looking to do things other than play pokemon non-stop for the last <laughs> true, true. week before that tournament um so like I i'm not sure i love it as someone participating in the world championships i definitely love it as someone who's excited to watch the end of the world championships um and i think every tournament like every first tournament of a new format is something people have been excited for maybe not like smaller changes like reg a and reg b but if you look at things like dallas in 2020 uh, and san diego this year like those had a a ton of players in them a ton of people very excited for them and mm -hmm. A ton of people excited to see what teams came out of that. And I think it makes a lot of sense to have Worlds be that category of tournament, not a 2015 all the teams are chalk category of tournament. Let's go. I found my people. John, <laughs> I, what do you... Oh, go ahead, right, Gavin. Go yeah, ahead, no, no, yeah. no, John, shut up. Well, Gavin, what were you saying? I think one thing, too, is that it makes it much more feasible to win from day one. So mm. far... Uh, the only person who's won Worlds from day one was Wolf, and that was because I think 2016 was a format where, like, the having a new team that just kind of, like, broke everything, like, and you were able to do that in 2016 because the meta was so centralized, but I don't think you've been able to do that, like, in any way since then, because the meta hasn't been, like, that much of a stranglehold, like, a clear thing to beat, but with a new format, like, it's easy enough to come in with a team that no one has any idea what they're doing against and just like break everything. So I like it from that perspective, just because otherwise it feels like um, if you make day two, like, or you need to make day two to have any realistic shot of it. I hate it this year specifically, though. I couldn't put my finger on why. I think it just <laughs> gives an opportunity for players to figure something out about the game and express it, like have that win world championships. We've seen that a long time ago with something like Ray figuring out Gothitel and like that winning the 2011 worlds. But I think there's enough good players playing nonstop all year that it's way less likely than something like that hides until worlds, but a new format opens it up. If you have like, you know, Gigantamax Charizard showing its face for the first time at worlds or like Palafin getting figured out for the first time at mm -hmm. worlds, like I think those are really exciting moments. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm about. 
All right, John, what's what's your take on this? Okay, I'm going to give you a really crazy analogy. So hopefully you don't all like immediately lose me. If you start with Yu-Gi-Oh, I'm going to be like... No, it's not... What? <laughs> okay, so if you've ever watched like a cooking competition show, like an actual like you're in the kitchen and then they give you all these ingredients and they say, you got to make something according to this theme and you got to present it to a bunch of judges. That's kind of like what I think this is, where you're getting to see a bunch of new things and this is like the first time... You might have like done any sort of like cooking with this kind of stuff. Obviously, it's going to be like for most of the people here. But then they're like, okay, you just have to use your know-how, like, of how are these things mixed together, and they have to like impress the judges. And by the judges, I mean they just need to be the other person, uh, like, in in a way that is uh, maybe new, maybe it's just like classical. Okay, but it's just going to be whoever has the best thing cooked up is probably going to win, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I'm comparing this to. Now, traditionally, when I play in, like, early format tournaments, I do pretty okay. So for, for my perspective, I'm all for it. The only thing I don't want to see or didn't want to see was Urshifu. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. I, like, I just have to accept at this point, right? It's kind of like someone put, like, a rotting cabbage in my, in my ingredients pile. <laughs> um, like, a stinky rotting cabbage, and it's infecting everything around it. Uh, but other than that, I, like, love all the other Pokemon... Uh, I think they're fairly well balanced now that we're not in a Dynamax format. So I'm excited to see what other people think of that I might not think of. I'm excited to try to break it, like I said before. Um, ultimately, the spectacle will definitely be something worth looking back and saying, like, yeah, that was one of the worlds of all time kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And whether or not I do well or not isn't something I'm super concerned with. Because, again, Japan, uh, it's going to be a fun time outside of Pokemon. Uh, and I'm just kind of like... Mm -hmm. I don't even have my world invite yet, so like I can't even say like I'm gonna play for sure. But you know, <laughs> no, I like I like the analogy. I like the yeah. Is 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 normal seasons like is that like comparable to opening a restaurant? Then I don't know if you're running the same <laughs> team the whole time. Kinda, and, kinda. And you're yeah, trying yeah. to keep your restaurant afloat. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, no, I, I like the analogy. Um, yeah, it it is very much going to be like a, a presentation of uh. Who has like the the best best takes on the tools that we've been given? Um, Gavin, I want to jump back to something you were mentioning, saying that this feels like one of the most possible years it is to win through day one. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I'm curious because um, the I don't think anybody in day two. I've never been a day two player, but I and so I do want to preface this. I don't think anybody in day two should be rolling up to worlds without like a plan but the thing that day one players get to do is they get to watch or day two players get they get to watch day one right you get to kind of mm -hmm. like look at what's happening what's out there is there something sauce that i you know should be something like crazy that i should be ripping is there something crazy that like i should pick team a or team b because it addresses this common thing better you know the, those are some of my thoughts and i think that Day two does have a decent advantage with at least that respect. I would be surprised if anyone totally rips a team that they just saw from day one. I would anticipate that people are going to add text to their team in order to counter what does in day one. Mm -hmm. For example, if everyone like in 2019 decided to run a bunch of Snorlax in day one for whatever reason, I still don't remember why. Um, <laughs> then Incineroars might be more inclined to decide to run knockoff as a response to that, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like a marginal change that seems to address like the growing trends in the meta. You're not going to change everything like for that, but you are going to adapt it slightly and uh, fix everything better unless Team Sheets are due at 8 p.m. the night before, which would be funny. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that, that is... <laughs> Yeah, I'm wondering how that's going to handle it. And then, like, yeah, if you want to, like, uh, for example, like, some day one player, like, like if, I don't know, Wolf, is Wolf in the day two race? He's, like, up there, right? Is there... He's 10th in points. 10th, okay. So, he, like, he could be a day one player. But, mm -hmm. like, if we're playing open team sheet at Worlds, like, after day one, you could just know literally everything about Worlds. It's not uh, about Wolf. It's not just, like, hearsay. It's not just, like... Oh yeah, Wolf is running, you know, Ray Ogre. It's like, no, he's running Ray Ogre with Focus Sash, miss, and then the, and this item and this move and this. Is, so like, uh, certain like top players that are day one, uh, might get extra targeted, um, you know, either for yeah, absolutely tacking your team out for or for ripping ideas from. How many day one players do you think will have two separate teams ready to go? 
That's a, okay, that's man. always been the fun thing, right? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I think um, we've no. had this debate a lot internally, uh, just like in team building groups that I've been a part of, and the 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 general consensus that I've seen a lot of the time is like you're kind of throwing if you don't because like winning through day one worlds is not easy um i've gone three for five on it uh making it through day one to get to day two um and i always like use that to like say like well yeah day one worlds is easy but everybody always tells me it's hard um and so i have to i have to go with the majority on this one um and because of that like i think that you're just kind of disrespecting the tournament if you don't bring your best for day one and instead try to save some super secret cool team for day two. Um, I don't know if the reason you brought it up is because I think Wolf attempted to do that in 2018. But yeah, I think I think he did. I think he was trying to and he didn't make it through day one, but he had like two teams planned. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't know Wolf did that. I gotcha. would just kind of curious people's thoughts. I learned my own lesson with this, like in 2010, bringing a terrible team to a regional because I wanted to save the better team for for nationals, and it, mm -hmm. it went off the rails. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I, I think you just have to bring whatever the the, the best thing I, you can require is. I hadn't think I hadn't thought about the question until you were just talking about like the whole uh, day two people get to see day one. Um, I'm kind of in the boat with with Gavin here, where like a uh, day one, a person who gets through day one using their team might like make some small little adjustments based on like what they might think the kickback response is and instead of like overhauling and having a whole separate team because that's a lot of work that's like you know going back to the whole cooking show analogy it's like you're using double the ingredients well, which you probably not, don't have time to cook up or effort not just meta trend reactions maybe but with such a limited format day one may be some of the best best two out of three practice you've gotten so far and you may realize things about your team and just be that kind of still in the team building process mm. at the end of of day one yeah mm -hmm. those kind of those kind of changes definitely happen i think i've had that kind of, a couple times like this year after a couple events i'd be like yeah if i had this instead of this then i do a little better or maybe if i uh instead of using this spread or i hit this speed or whatever so those kind of tweaks if you go through day one are probably the tweaks you take uh, going into day two if you really feel that strongly about them otherwise i think it's not really worth the payout of building a second team uh for the use of like for using in a, in another stage there has been only one player who has made it through day one or lcq or whatever and then switch teams and then top cut day two does anyone know who that is did they switch full teams or was it just like a one month change full teams hmm. no i don't know hmm. i was thinking I'll give of you a, a hint Okay, go ahead. It was from Dual Primals to Zerndon. Oh, my. This is your VGC history trivia of the day. Anyone know? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I don't know this one. Is it uh, Zerndon? Was it Edu? It was Alejandro Jimenez, Legacy VGC. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, it kind realized. of sounds like something he would do. Cypher said the same thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. I, I was thinking somebody who actually made it all the way into, like, top eight or something, but I forgot. Worlds is, like, a bigger cut. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. And maybe he would have done better if he just stuck to the same team. <laughs> but, hey, 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 he did. You said he cut? He got top 24, I think. That's that's still pretty reasonable, honestly. I yeah. mean, making it to the single elimination stage, right? Because that's what I think it was, at yeah. top 24. I think the funniest example of someone changing their team and going catastrophically wrong, though, is Nosh, who I believe it was 2012 Worlds, uh, wanted to save his team for the main tournament, so brought something standard through LCQ, and immediately lost in round two to Illuminate Starmie. Illuminate Starmie, let's go! Yeah, baby! Honestly, they should just make Illuminate give you a free Bright Powder. Who's with me? <laughs> It just no no no. Let's make it better than that. Like, what if it's like when you switch it in, it's like flash on both of the opposing Pokemon, so it just drops their accuracy. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. What yeah. if Illuminate gives you five hundred dollars? Oh, that'd that, be that, that's too, always the joke about you know winning a tournament with Amulet Coin. It's like it doesn't do anything for you in a competitive VGC game, so you should get extra prize money for it. They should write that into the rule document somewhere, mm -hmm. right? Come on. Um. And if you do it with G Max Meowth, get like triple your money or something. 
No, uh, no, no. The issue is that every it would win every juniors and seniors event. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, no! <laughs> Maybe they have a clause that says you have to be paying your taxes in order to buy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and move us on to the last segment here. We're nearing the two hour mark, um, and um, and we still have to play the calc is right. Um, I actually think we're going to start with John's calc because um because I saw that he actually put it in the doc. So, um, but yeah, I guess I should re quick refresh people. We're playing the calc is right, where uh, we're all going to take a turn presenting a calc, and then everybody else is going to guess. You guess a number that's within the percentage range. So if you think it's going to do like 90 to 100%, you might say like 95. Um, and then we uh, we check if you were within in the range or out and you get the point we don't actually track the points it's like who's line or whatever. it's all for funsies it's all for funsies um and so um john why don't you go ahead and um start with yours all right guys we are brambled up so my calc has a bramble gas in it hopefully you know your bramble gas do you want to put it in the twist chat or am i uh i guess i will because I, I already have it okay. um Actually, no, you do it because you're the you're the mod, right? I grab it. Broadcaster. Yeah, whatever. I am the I am anyway, the broadcaster. So let's 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 set the stage. You've tailwinded once, so Bramble Gas gets a plus one attack boost from your own tailwind, and then later they bring the opponent brings in a Flutter Main, and you're gonna Shadow Sneak at plus one. You don't have a boosting item, and you're uh, jolly nature, so it's like two fifty two, plus one Bramble Gas versus this pretty bulky Flutter Main, but it came in after you got the plus one. So how much does this do? All right. The, uh, so yeah, spread? we'll have the the flutter main spread. Two fifty two sixty eight. Two fifty two sixty eight. So it's a pretty oh, that's decently bulky. bulky pretty flutter. fat. Um. All right. So when you we but what we normally do is we just kind of verbally announce that you're locked in when you're ready, and then John will call on people to give their answers. Um. And it's just kind of gentleman's rule, like don't just steal somebody else's guess. <laughs> but unless they happen to steal your guess, then you have to pick a number. Um. I. I'm locked in. Okay. I, I'm locked in. You're locked? Okay. Len? You're, I think you're muted? Either that or... 105. Oh, oh wait. Okay, okay. Um, okay, so we got... 105. Wait, out. Okay, so... Well, okay, so he's, he's... I guess Len's going first. Len's going 105. All right. How about you, Gavin? Oh, I was going to say 60. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll split because the difference. Interesting. interesting I'll interesting. split the difference. I'm giving it 86. Okay, let's type this bad boy in. Oh yeah, I gotta put it in. I because I played a bramble gas at a PC recently. Oh okay. Uh, we don't. And have it didn't do any damage, it, right? right? <laughs> yeah, it was shadow sneak, and I think it shadow snuck my bulky Fluttermane. I don't remember it doing very much. <laughs> but was it plus one? Because it is plus no. one right now. No, it wasn't. So maybe like that's where I'm messing up, and maybe it is more towards Alex's range of things. Was your Fluttermane still ghost type? That's what I'm hoping for here. <laughs> <laughs> good question i think i'm missing just the plus one yeah there weren't any terras or anything there was no terror uh 252 is this correct john oh wait, no we have adamant you gotta change it to jolly i'm in there let's go yep there it is it's so just, it, it looks like it's just me the the final answer is 82 to 100 um it looks like dane snuck in there um, oh wow and cypher just outside um the calc supports the wind rider tailwind interaction nerd you're very based i didn't know that but thank you for telling us all <laughs> oh wait hold on <laughs> neutral but where's tailwind boom <laughs> <Plus one. laughs> all right uh yeah gotta show off all the functions i mean why not um uh, okay so yeah uh i guess point for me let's go ahead and throw it to uh len you want to present your calc yeah, sure. We're going to do 252, Modest, uh, Choice Specs, Terra Fairy, Flutter Main, with Beads of Ruin. Oh, boy. With Max Special Defense T-Tar with Assault Vest. Because I couldn't do a calc that wasn't a Max Special Defense T-Tar calc. Of course, of course. Access. And uh, is, it, is it just like Max and HP, Max Defense, or is it Max Special Defense? Max HP, Max Special Defense, Careful. Okay. Careful. And the assault. Up, right? Sand, Sand is up. And assault. And assault. assault. <laughs> and beats a friend. Oh god. Um, All right, here it is. There's the cow. Oh, John's got it. Okay. I think I think that's right. Two two plus specs. Terry fairy beats a ruin. Yeah, yeah. Water. Oh, I didn't put the moon blast part, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's moon blast. Okay. Um. Sheesh. I gotta think about this. Kind of hard. 
All right, I got my number locked in. I got I got my number. That's a tough one. I think I think I got it. You All think right, you Gavin. got it? All right. Let's hear it. I'm gonna keep saying sixty until it's right. Sixty. <laughs> he's riding the he's riding the, he's riding like the hypnosis. It. He's riding the hypnosis train. <laughs> Who's next? You want me to go? Yeah, go for it. Uh, I'm gonna go with seventy nine. Dang. Okay. I'm. I'm gonna. I guess go one under John. I had seventy eight. Dang. Um, dang. All right. So hold on. Let's uh, let's start plugging this in. So we've got Fluttermane, Specs, two fifty two modest, um, Bees of Ruin. Thankfully, it's not in Sun or anything. <laughs> um, True. We don't have Proto activated. Uh, very, very active. Yeah, I, I, I think everything's going to get reset when I put in the Tyranitar. So, Terra Flag AV, sure. 252, 252. Careful. Careful. This thing might as well be a Blissey. Um, Facts. Uh, I think that's everything for the Tyranitar. And then we got to get Beads of Ruin. You got to put Beads Terra up Fairy. again and Terra up. Um, oh, it's Terra Fairy. Crap. <laughs> quick up quick apply a four over three um all right i i was doing it assuming no terra fairy len does this look uh correct do you have uh do i have everything right it's choice specs terra fairy flutter main moon blast with uh beads of ruin um versus max spadef everything t-tar in sand yep yep that's all right okay all right. it looks like me and john Dang, are in there baby did we did it yeah, yeah, i knew it wouldn't kill for for Terra, he's right as well. Y'all know your damage calculus. True, true. Uh, special defense uh, guitar. I, uh, I've missed the Terra Fairy. No, I would have got it. I would have gone 60 over four thirds. Yeah, yep, yep. I, I'm sticking to that. All right. <laughs> um. Okay, then let's uh let's throw it over now to uh to Gavin's. Wow, Tzar is hanging. All right. This is based off of a conversation I had with uh Kamal at lunch yesterday. Okay. So. Uh, this is Max Modest Specs uh, Terrifier Chiyu Heatwave mm. versus Max HP. That's only bulk, just as like a regular Annihilate. Max HP Terrifier Annihilate in Sun with mm. Friend Guard. With friend so guard. the way to think of it is oh. like, it's Sun, you're throwing your Chiyu at them, and they're throwing their mouse safe at you, and they gotta Terrifier it. How much are you doing with Heat Wave? Uh, okay. I feel like I'm already ready for this one. Um, I've got it 100%. Heat Wave, is it? Uh, Heat Wave. Heat Wave. Is it spread Heat Wave? It's spread Heat Wave because it's going oh, as there's, a, there's, a, mouse there's, a, there's a mouse. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no bonus points for uh, getting the calc on the mouse. Old. There was a specs. There was a specs. It's specs. Sorry, sorry, yeah, there's sorry. A specs. Specs. There's a specs. Um, yeah, I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Um, I am too. You good, Lunt? Yeah, I'm locked in. I feel very right. confident. This Let, all right, Alex, you first. Uh, I'm going to go for 68. Okay. John? I'm going 44. What? 45 is what I had in mind. What? Okay. So somebody's going <laughs> to right. one-up John again. <laughs> throw, throw on that cal. All right. She, you. There's no way, bro. This is definitely a three-hit KO. You are, you are capping. 252. No spadef. All right, terrify your. Get that in there. Friend guard. Wow, there's a lot to do. Terra choice. Yeah, I thought specs. I gave it complicated damage calc. <laughs> no, that, I, no, listen, it's fine. You suppose. Listen, to. this is something where I feel like you could set it up in a game realistically. This is something that could happen on turn one. So like that's the thing. That's the nature of like Terra and Gen Nine is that you can throw eighteen multipliers on a move turn one. Um, yeah, like I'm not gonna set up anything like bullet seed on stamina mudsdale, but like I feel like this is more fair. <laughs> that is this right? Is this right, uh, Evan? Uh, uh, what's the calc? So we have choice specs beads, uh, of course, Terra Fire uh -huh. Chiyu Heat Wave versus Terra Fire Annihilate in Sun with Friend Guard. It's fifty-one to sixty-one. Yep, that's what I have. Oh my no, god, no. I'm out. We undershot. We undershot. Yeah, you guys are under, and it's I'm terrible. over. I'm very. No, I happy knew it with wasn't that. actually that overpowered, bro. The amount of times I have heat waved something in sun and have saw it do like no damage with armor rouge is depressing. But this also is messed up because uh, like I can't exactly describe how the game would go, but like if this annihilate like I don't know messed up and clicked bulk up that turn, 
uh, and the protect there's a protect on the mouse. It would actually take another one if it was uh, if it was citrus berry. Sorry, yeah, I'm citrus not... berry. Yeah. Um, it had to be citrus. Yeah, terrifying thing is that means overheat goes over on like as a roll for one shot. Yeah, no, it? overheat can kill. Overheat can kill. And I, yeah, I was going to do that one, but I thought that people would just say it'll kill or not. And I thought no, but the thing, like... the fun thing is, is that even if you're confident it'll kill, you have to say the percent. But you have to say how much overkill it is. <laughs> kind of true. Kind of true. Uh, yeah, if you just put it at 100, then you would be right in there. I, I like the heat wave choice. It was a bit weird. Um, all right, I'm going to bring it into uh, to regulation D. Um, we've uh, got a couple multipliers on this one. Uh, choice Specs and Terra Dragon. Um, here we go. Dragon Energy from Reggie Drago uh, into a no bulk Urshifu. But you're at 50%. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you, you got hit by a, a ruination or a super fang or something. <laughs> You're at half versus no bulk or shifu, um, or shifu no water. bulk, it's no specs, bulk. right? And it's specs Terra Dragon Dragon Energy from Drago it's spread, spread versus zero zero or shifu. Dude, what? I don't have a baseline. <laughs> um. Okay. I'm not gonna oh. put the ability on Dra Reggie Drago. Just know that it has an ability. Okay. <laughs> Dragon's Maw. That's just a lame oh, ability. Transistor was such a cool name. Dragon's Maw is like it's cool, but oh well, whatever. Uh, I think I have a. I think I have a count. Dragon's Maw was un not nerfed, right? It was, it was not nerfed. <laughs> correct. Dragon's Maw is a full power. <laughs> All um, right. Um, I haven't heard any locks. I I, I think I, I know what I'm saying. Oh, I'm in. I've never played a format with with Reggie Drago, so we're gonna be just throwing numbers. <laughs> <out here. laughs> I'm, All right, well, I'm gonna say, I'm well, gonna say to roll to kill and do do ninety five. Ninety five. Yeah. All right. Um. Okay. Uh, John, what do you got? Uh, I have eighty five. Eighty five. Okay. And Len, I'm gonna take the low end. I think like sixty two. Reggie Drago. Okay. Um. This is choice scarf. I actually never specified the nature, but I maybe yeah, about us. Wait, you, you said you said specs, right? What? Yeah, specs. Specs, specs. specs. Yeah, it's specs. It's specs. It's okay. specs. Said, no, no, no. I got. I'm changing that, but I also never. I just don't think okay. I mentioned the EVs at all. But yeah, we'll just. No, you said it was modest. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Um, Which implies it's like max, right? Um, we're we're saying it's no bulk, and so it's actually for defense for no reason. Um. <laughs> True. So we got That's for the other Shifu, actually. Gotta throw this at 50. Terra, Dragon, Dragon's Maw, Dragon Energy. I think I have it here as. Turn your friend, oh, turn wait, your wait, friend guard off. still there. So this thing guard off. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. This thing is still very dead. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, no. No, it's dead. Oh, high. It's no. No, it's no, it's not a roll to kill, Gavin. It's just dead. I've got this thing uh. at 50%. <laughs> okay but you would be right if the uh dragon's mod did get nerfed right uh i guess yeah if we instead made it like what protosynthesis no you'd have to like make life it orb? life orb i guess oh we could just make this life orb right life orb yeah. dragon's oh, that's mod. fine too that would do oh it. no you still would have been wrong yeah no that's still uh a guaranteed <laughs> oko it, it, it's like a small roll not to kill yeah, Drago, Drago, even if it's taken, like, a big chunk, it's still doing so much damage with that Dragon's Maw. Nah, this mod, this mod ain't real, bro. The All Draco right. Meteor, we're gonna go back to the Latios Dragon Gem days, bro. I'm, I'm excited right. for this guy. In my defense, for some reason, I think I heard Ursa Luna, and I would have been more wrong, I think. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Ursa Luna would have uh, taked it, yeah. It would have taken Yeah, it. Maybe, maybe it would have taken, like, 70%. We're not we're not doing another calc though. We're at, we're gonna wrap there. Thank you, uh, Gavin, Len, and John all for being on. Um, it was a good time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks um, for having me.